Hello there everyone, my name is Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations and thank you very much for joining me today. Um, I have no idea how many viewers there are because YouTube is giving me all sorts of weird numbers here. It says five, maybe five, a load of five people, maybe it's more. Hello Steve, uh, hello GT, hello Trina, hello Thomas, hello Scarlet Swordfish, uh, hello Madeline. Um, a guest on the old Mac Yak yesterday, Sad Mac 356. Hello. Um, so, uh, uh, today's going to be a bit of an interesting one. I, um, I've been really, really busy with my normal, my day job lately, and uh, I've got this mountain of boxes in my living room of people who have been sending me recap work. And obviously, part of the thing this weekend is to try and get on top of some of that. Um, and, uh, um, I honestly had no idea what was in any of these boxes. So I just picked up the one that's been here the longest and I thought I'll see what's in that. And then there were some interesting things in there. Um, and it sort of relates to something that I've been talking about um, uh, on, uh, on Facebook. Um, I had a situation relatively recently where someone was talking about they were having issues with the Mac 2 SI. Now the issue they were actually have had was a bit of a rookie mistake. And that was that they had the little power button pushed and turned now, for those who don't re realize this but with the old mac 2 series they had a power button that uh you could push it in and you could turn it 90 degrees and it left the button in the on position so it meant that if there was a power outage or something like that and you were using that computer as a server or something like that as soon as the power came back on so did the computer it was like essentially having that button in the permanently on position and uh, and as i say it was designed for that purpose that if you are uh, if you had a, uh, you know, a power outage, as soon as the power came back on, the computer would switch straight back on again. Um, and now, that's what the problem the person had with the 2SI was, but that's, some, that's another story. Um, essentially, when this person said they were having problems with the 2SI, I, I said in the uh, Facebook chat, I said, um, has it been recapped? And they said something like, I think there was like the logic board had been recapped or was going to be recapped or something like that. And I said, yeah, and they said, they actually asked in this, could it be a problem with the power supply? Um, and I said, you got to recap it. And of course, someone then came in and said, oh, I'm so sick of this. Just recap it advice. Why don't you test it and all that sort of stuff? And I said, look, I don't just give recap it advice. I don't just say recap it no matter what someone says. But when it's something like a Mac 2SI power supply, if it hasn't been recapped, it needs recapping. Uh, hello, Dana. Um, and, uh, and I... Um, and I basically stood by that. I said, look, you know, we're not, I, it, the, the situation with the Mac 2 SI power supply isn't, it might need recapping. It is, it will need recapping. All Mac 2 SI power supplies will need recapping because of the way they're made. They've got uh, some surface mount electrolytic capacitors on them that leak. Uh, they've got a few, uh, uh, you know, sort of big old leaky electrolytics like this as well. Um, and as I say, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And it's, you know, it's, it's the advice that I would give anyone with a Macintosh 2SI. If you haven't recapped the power supply, recap it. It's living on borrowed time. Um, but um, but the, to, to some extent, the reason why that's relevant to what I'm talking about here today is because someone has sent me... This. Uh, does anyone know from... Just from looking at it, I know I know that Steve will know exactly what this is. So, does anyone here can just look at this board and tell me what sort of board it is? I, I hope it's not written on here somewhere because that would just give it away. It is written on here. Three seconds. Two. One. Come on. Uh, sorry, if no one else answers, you're allowed to answer, Steve. It's a computer motherboard. This is very true. Trady Trev. Hello, Trady Trev. SAE, well done, Jeff Barnard. And hello to Jeff Barnard. Oh, I didn't say hello to Zombie Geek 33 either. Hello. Um, uh, I was part of that conversation. That fellow was uh, confrontational from the start. He, he was. And, um, and I think he was basically just sitting there waiting to pounce, waiting for someone to actually say recap it uh, and then go on his rant. Uh, but I did make it very, very clear to this person that I don't, don't just give recap it advice. And as I say, this is the point. Um, this is apparently, I haven't tested this, we're going to test it. This is a Mac 2 SE logic board that doesn't work. 
Now, if someone comes to me and says, I've got a Mac 2 SE logic board that doesn't work, I don't come out and say recap it because chances are it's not the caps. Same with a Mac Plus. I hear this all the time. Oh, my Mac Plus doesn't work. Oh, I'll recap the analog board. Um, the Mac Plus has uh, lots of problems, but the, recapping is not the first thing I would suggest to someone. If someone came to me with a Mac Plus, the first thing I'd say is check with crap solder joints on the analog board. Uh, and then after that, I'd be saying correct, correct you know, check the resistors and the diodes around the uh, around the bottom of the board, around the uh, sort of was it the five volt power supply. You know, the, I'm not saying that capacitors can't fail on a Mac Plus, sure, but it's not their main point of failure. It's not their main point of weakness. But if someone comes to me and says I've got a Macintosh, say LC, for example, and they say it hasn't been recapped, I'm going to say recap it, even if it's working. I'm going to say recap it. Again, you're living on borrowed time with those things. The, those caps are going to fail. So anyhow, Macintosh 2 SE. Um, I kind of like these. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure why, but I, I've got a real fondness for the old SE. I've got one here. Um, and uh, and so we're going to, I mean, look, you know, there are, what was it, 68,000 CPU. Um yeah, they're great for playing Shuffle Puck Cafe. You could probably use Microsoft Word version 4 or something on them. Um, I think you can even run 5. Hello, Justin Morgan. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Jeff Barnard, I mean, yeah, yeah, Macintosh Plus. I mean, again, we come down to, with age, you virtually get, I mean, pretty much every Macintosh Plus, 512K, um, 128K, even SEs to some extent that come to me generally have cracked solder joints on the analog board. Um, not bad. Max Button, hello. Um, so, uh, candy bar size CPU. Yeah, there it is. Nom, 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 nom. That's it there. Um, they, of course, once we went on to the, uh, uh, the Mac Classic and the Classic 2, they started using a square version of that CPU rather than a long, um, a long straight white flat one like that. Um, this has a, uh, a, a, uh, four megabyte ceiling for RAM. It doesn't matter what size SIMs you put in here. If they're over one megabyte, you're only going to get four megabytes in total. So this can be configured at one megabyte, two megabytes, two and a half megabytes, and four megabytes, if I remember rightly. And it's got a little, this is one of the um, later ones. It has a little jumper on it um, just here. I can, you can probably zoom in on that with a little side angle here. How's the side angle camera going? It was really dark the other day. I might need to. Uh, oopsie. Telephoto. Come on, keep telephoto. It's a bit dark, isn't it? Anyhow, that's it there. That's the jumper. Uh, and you may or may not be able to see there it says 2 slash 4 megabyte and 1 megabyte. And I, for the life of me, cannot remember how that's meant to be configured. Hello, Trina. Welcome to the stream. Uh, yes, I, I thought I'd me. I, I've got. I can't remember. I'll have to look it up. I might have a book here. Does anyone remember? Um, 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 probably on one of those websites. Whoopsie. So, because uh, this has actually got the pin off it entirely, so I'm guessing that's like four megabyte, something like that. I don't know. I'm gonna have to look it up. Gonna have to look it up because I can't remember. Um, let's look it up now. Oopsie. I, I just realized before that, well, I was getting crackles in the microphone last time I did a live stream and I haven't replaced that cable. So if there are crackles again, I apologize. SE RAM jumper. This will probably take me to low end Mac. Uh, there we go. Mac SE low end Mac. Off for four. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. Save me from looking it up. It's good when the viewers know what they're talking about. Um, okay, so. All right. Now, um, I've also got another interesting thing here, which I, I would like to show you. This is a cute one. Um, just going to jump across here to the side view. And that's this guy here. I'll just zoom in on this one as well. Boom. So what I have here is a beautiful, got to have adjectives, beautiful mini scribe, 11th of September, 1989. And it is 20 whole megabytes. 
Um, and if you have a look here, you'll see that little guy there. That is a stepper motor. These are the ones that make that sort of whistling sound as they're accessing the hard drive. They sort of go this like, like sort of thing as the stepper motor spins around. Obviously extremely slow uh, and inefficient as this thing spins around and makes the head move back and forwards. You know, they moved to uh, a, you know, sort of like a, that sort of, what do you call it, rudder type uh, um, heads, um, you know, later on. And of course, they're still using that with, um, with modern hard drives. But these early ones use these stepper motors, and of course they're incredibly slow, but they make a lovely sound. And again, it's a sound you'll often hear in like 1980s um, movies where they involve computers. And they'll have that. They'll have that. But first of all, you have the Mac, sorry, the Mac Plus, you know, 800K Sony 800K floppy drive uh, access sound that they often use in movies, and then they they use this sound as well. Love the sound. It's great. Um, right. Um, so you were looking to chip 30 pin memory modules work on say the classic. Yes, they should be fine in the classic. They they almost definitely won't work in the older ones, but the uh, yes, those two two chip ones should work in a classic and a classic two. Um All right. So, now this feels a little bit a little bit like flogging a dead horse this one here because we're talking about uh, a hard drive from 1989. What do we know about those? Chances are they are going to fail. But this um, do not rotate the interrupter. Oops. Um, what CPUs do you have in your Mac Pro? Are you talking about this one? Well, I assume you're talking about the one that I use, my, my, day, my daily driver, because I have two Mac Pros. I have this one here, um, and, um, and, and this one's an older one. But in my one up there... It's a dual quad core, I think, three gigahertz or something like that. I think. Um, yes. No. Dual hex core. Yeah. So it's 12 cores. It's a dual hex core, I think, three gigabytes. I think that's what it is. But I'm not there, so I can't be certain. But I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, and that's a five comma one that I have. Um, okay. Right, uh, Andrew. Hello. Um, so, uh, so anyhow, um, so here's here's what I basically have to do today. I'm going to first of all see if I can fix this hard drive. Second of all, I'm going to test this SE board to see if it works, and if it doesn't work, see if we can fix it. I've got another SE board here where we've got the RAM, the little clips come off the side of the RAM holder, and I think I have a spare one, so I might I might replace that. I've got my UM machine up and working again. This is the solder suckery thing which you can hang on, can we see this here yeah. um, um, uh, and i will uh, and potentially go in and take that one of those ram holders off and replace it with one that's not snapped um it's a lot of work just for a little clip that'll probably break on the new one anyway but uh you know that's uh might be entertaining so i'm going to jump across to the microscope view here and we're going to have a look and see what it is that's got this hard drive ugh, so upset <laughs> okay, let's just check the old focus situation here. Oh, we're already in focus. How cool is that? Dun, dun, dun. Bum, 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 bum. So what we have there is a tantalum capacitor that has exploded. And... Um, while I was hoping that it would be the same as the one next to it, it's uh, quite different. So I've got no idea what the rating of this one is. So unless I can find someone else with a mini scribe hard drive like this who can tell me what the, the rating is, I might be able to find a picture of one. We'll see. Um, okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, right. Um, okay, they, they could well be the X5690. I am terrible with the Mac Pro stuff. If uh, Jay from House of Moth jumps on, he might know, and certainly Steve will probably know. Um, was that the hard drive in an SE? You may have some, but I'm unsure. Yes, definitely the hard drive in the SE, and if you have some, it would be awesome, Steve. It would be awesome. I would be reaching out to my Mac Yak family and saying, Help me. Where's my scalpel? I'll be back in a sec. Uh, uh, uh. 
Uh, here it is. Got a delivery of these the other day. These are uh, PLCC sockets for FPUs, which I will be, which I use for adding FPUs to LC2s because it's my mission. It's my mission in life to add L um, FPUs to LCs, LC2s all around the world after Apple were awful. Um, okay, so it, will I be able to read anything under this burnness? I bet you I won't. Hmm. Uh, found a photo online. Is that right near the SCSI port? Uh, it is underneath the power port. But yes, but it is right next to it. Are you able to send it to me? Oh, crap, I didn't bring my phone down. What a loser. What a twit. I'm stupid. Oops, that's not what I want. I don't want Skype. That'll freak this out. All my cameras and everything, it'll get upset. Right, okay, so is there a model number on HDD? Um, so I, I'm, I'm thinking that Steve is going to send me a pic here. A pic here. So I'm just going to open up my message here because. Uh, we. Oopsie. Right. Right, I'm I'm waiting for Steve. I can see Steve's. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Look at you. Look at you there. So that's forty-seven. That's a twenty-two sixteen. Awesome. Pretty sure I got one of those. This is definitely a forty-seven sixteen. So twenty-two sixteen. Awesome. Thank you, Steve, to the rescue. Mac Yak family. Anyone who doesn't watch Mac Yak, you should. Right. So. Uh, I might even, I might check this uh, resistor as well, because it'd be grubby. The first thing we've got to do is get this, uh, this young chappy off here. Just want to put a little heat shield here so as not to melt the, uh, power supply thingy. I might need a spring. Uh, for those who haven't seen my, uh, live streams before, I put springs on these things like that. Spring. And that makes the little heat shield stand up. Stand to attention. Oh, it's around the wrong way. Ooh -wee. So, big sir, eh? M1, eh? Apple silicon, eh? How about all that then? What are people thinking about that? Bye. I'm going to take this one off as well, just clean it up, might even put a new one on, may as well. There we go. Ugly. Now, of course, this may not fix it, but we'll see. Uh, <coughs> oh, jeez, that stinks. Um, stupid. Um... Right, okay, I'm checking here. You're pressing the items to the blue thing that has gone boom. Uh, um, no, no, so... Well, let's have a look. Yeah, no, it's all, it's all pretty, pretty much everything's going on on this side of the board. Uh, and here's the thing, here's the problem I have with something like this. I don't know whether the capacitor is the cause of the failure or in response to a failure. That's kind of one of the, the problems you have with this sort of thing. So, is your extractor on? Yes, it is. It's actually on today. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's probably, it probably wasn't close enough to it when I was sucking it out, though. So, um, what machine is that being worked on? So, Tom Barber, this is. Oh, he's uh, he's already answered that. Sorry, other people are answering. I just I, I just got a bit behind on the chat there. It went a bit uh, went a bit fast for my slow brain. Right, so let's uh, get into the cleaning mode like we were going to be recapping. Well, we are recapping, aren't we? So get some flux under there, get my trusty soldering iron. Anyone who is uh, watching this live stream for the first time, perhaps they've watched my uh, uh, soldering guide. Um, I get a lot of people watching my soldering guide. Um, I generally use those sort of soldering techniques for repairing vintage computers and I repair some modern ones as well but I mainly do vintage ones because I like them and that's mainly because what people send me um and I, what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just cleaning up these pads that have been uh grubbied with time and with explosion 
And I'm hopeful, though only a little bit, that this might be all this needs. Just a couple of new caps and, uh, and we'll be away. Um, okay, and of course the other thing I have to keep in mind, that I'm, I'm fixing a very clear electrical malfunction here, but this hard drive could well have mechanical failure as well. Um, you know, the hard drive at this age, you really don't expect them to work. If it does work, I might try and get whatever data's on it off, because sometimes there are little treasures on these things. I mean, I'm not, I'm not someone who likes to delve into people's, you know, personal files. It's of zero interest to me. I don't want to look at like old Word documents or something like that. But if people have got little, you know, sort of plugins or something. I mean, there's something that I've been looking for for a long time. I still haven't been able to find. It's certainly not on Macintosh Garden. I did have it on, I think, a floppy disk at one stage. I don't know where that's gone. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, it's 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 disappointing to me that I can't get that. And when I talk to people about it, they point me towards something that is not what I'm looking for. They point me towards something that is very close but not the same. So, um, and I just would love to be able to get the original. So I've got a bit of black gunk here that I'm just going to save a bit of time by scraping with my scalpel, and that scalpel needs to be replaced because it's leaving little lines on there. When they leave little lines, you know. Uh, um, you know, there's a little grooves in a blade and it's time to be replaced. You don't want that. I managed to burn myself the other day, which was clever of me. Uh, it's nearly mended now, but I burned myself on my hot air station, which I've never done before. I've burned myself on the soldering iron, well, probably weekly, but uh, never on a hot air station before. I must have been tired or lapse of concentration or something like that. Um, but it is one of the risks with working with hot stuff. Hot stuff. Okay, I've got to test this resistor, of course. Now, uh, I am going to use my little, what is it called? Resistor toolkit or R toolkit or something like that. Little app that I have on my phone. I didn't bring my phone down. I just, I went to grab, I went to grab my phone before and I just realized I didn't have it. So I haven't got my phone here, so I don't have my little resistor toolkit app. Ah, oh, piffle. Who feels like looking up um, resistor color bands for me? I, um... I, uh, I can't, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can obviously do it. So what have we got here? We've got uh, brown, black, black, silver, brown. Or is it red? Brown, black, black, silver, brown. Anyone? Anyone? Okay, let's just uh, clean some of this off. I know I should memorize all these uh, resistor bands, but I, I, I'm in my late 40s and I think I've reached capacity in the brain. I, anytime I learn something new, something old leaks out the other end. So, I, you know, I, I just have to be careful about what I learn. You know, I don't want to lose some of the important stuff. And it's like, oh no, I forgot my seventh birthday. Um, so, uh, yeah, just want to... Uh, I just, I'm quite happy to just use tools to look things like that up. Train burner that to fetch things from the house. Easy. Yeah, that would not be very easy to do that. Uh, chickens don't train particularly well. I mean, you can train chickens, but not to do much. All right. All right. Comes out of my ears. When new stuff goes in, the, the old information leaks out of my ears. Right, I'm going to just measure this uh, resistor in situ. And uh, it may ooh, give us some clue as to what it is meant to be. 20 ohm, 1%. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to check that. Hmm. I'm getting uh, significantly less resistance than that, but that could well be because uh, it's uh, going somewhere else. Generally with a resistor, uh, if you get less than the resistance that it's, it's rated at, um, you are, if you get less than the resistance, the resistor still could be fine. If you get greater than the resistance, the chance is the resistor is gone. 
So um, the only way I can test this for sure is to take it out now, um, which I am going to do because, you know, when has anyone ever known me to do things half-assed? Other than, like, in my last stream. And possibly the stream before that. Come on, oh, I'm melting. I need to be. I need to move this around because I'm right-handed. Mm. Yay! Yay! Okay. Ah. Uh, Yes, it is a hard disk. Sorry about that. Um, I, look, I normally in my live streams, I, I put up there what I'm going to be working on. But I just had this fear with what I was working on today that some of the things that I had planned may not work out. So I thought I'd better just go with the flow. Uh, I will some stage put some little bannery thing up here like Paul Daniels does, if anyone knows who Paul Daniels is. Um, and uh, at which actually goes in and says, this is what I'm currently working on. Um did it. All right, so that's all ready for a new resistor if we need one. I mean, I should probably put one in seeing as it's out anyway. Let's test this little guy. Hey, you know, little guy. Oh, I can't, I can't focus because it's too far away. So you just have to look at this blurry for the moment. One point four, one point three ohms. So that's interesting. Are we absolutely sure it's twenty? Maybe I'm reading it the wrong way. Okay, GT is here now. You didn't fall asleep. You said you were potentially going to fall asleep. Uh, this door uh, bands. Just do bands. There'll be a calculator online here for sure. I've got this awesome little app for it that I don't have with me. I, 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 no, I don't want to. I don't want to look it up. I want, to, I want something to do all the hard work for me. It may be a 10 ohm. Okay, it's still not even there though. So number of bands is one, two, three, four, five. It's a five band. Uh, first band. Now, which way around does it go? Is it brown? Is it... Uh, is, it is that grey or is it silver? Um... Far out. It must be great. Because uh, silver you get in the, was it the last band? The uh, the tolerance band? But it's not the last band, so that must be great. So, looks like gold. Do you think that's gold? Say what? Doesn't look gold to me. I mean, unless all of the goldness has gone away. But even then, it's in the wrong place to be gold. Um, okay, so I'm going to assume, uh, gray, black, black, brown. What does that say? That says 180 ohms. That's if I'm reading it in that direction and I'm treating that as gray. 180 ohms. And then if I go the other way, which is uh, brown, black, black, gray, oh no, silver. Yeah, it's that way around. Silver and then brown. And that is one ohm. There we go. So it is a one ohm. So that's basically, it is... Uh, Brown, black, black, silver, brown. Brown, black, black, silver, brown. Okay, which is one ohm. There we go. Which makes more sense with what I was measuring. So, so there we go. So it's one ohm. Yay! Do I have a one ohm? Oh, because I may as well stick a new one in. Okay. How long do you reckon it'll take me to find one in there? I don't even know if I have one in here. I 
I mean, do I, do I really go down this path? Or do I just stick the old one back on? I mean, this could take me ages. This is, there are so many in here. I really need little drawers for these. Little, I know that. I realize that. But I, I have, the priorities get, um, priorities get, for, uh, sorry, the capacitors get first priority here. Just got to find the uh, silver. Silver video. I don't even know. You see, this is from a kit. Wow, look at this one. This is clearly one that I uh, pulled out of something to repair. You can't see it. Look at this guy. He's not well. Okay, so if I can't find it like really quickly, I'm just going to put the old one back in because it does seem to be testing okay. And as I say, I'm not even sure if I have one in here. Just looking for silver. I'm looking for silver to catch my eye. Is that silver? No, it's gold. Okay. Give it up. Put the old one back in. <sighs> Jay's not here to give me grief about that, so... Uh, right, now, I need to put some tantalum capacitors on here, so it's a good job I have tantalum capacitors, isn't it? Um, tant, let's have a look. SMT Tantalums 1, because I have two containers of SMT uh, Tantalums, and we need a 47 microfarad 16 volt. Got plenty of those, because they're all over the max. And we need a 22 microfarad 16 volt. I got one of those too. Happy days, happy days. Should I put ones with higher voltage on? I don't even know if I have them. Never mind. Not to worry. <sighs> Alright. Whoopsie. Excuse me. Excuse me. Which I am just going to check to see if I have a higher voltage. Uh... Yeah, I've got some more here. So if I've got a 22 in, in a higher voltage, I'll probably put that on. And I don't. Why are they there? Oh, I know why they're there. Everyone relax. Everyone relax. It's all good. 22, 22, 22, 22. Okay, it'll do. It'll do. All right. Okay. <laughs> right. Find a new one is my vote. Yes, I know, Trina. I knew you'd say that. Um, okay, so let's uh, put some flux under here. And I'll tell you what, if this doesn't fix it, you know, like if this just blows up spectacularly, um, that'll be fun. Now, does anyone remember which one went where? Jake, uh, Steve sent me that pic, so I'm fine. Um, 47 down the bottom, 22 at the top. Now, the 22 is quite small in comparison. So, but still should be fine. What's going on with jelly? What's happening with jelly? Right. I don't know what's going on over there. I'm just looking at the chat and I'm getting confused. I'm confused. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So yeah, if um, if this works, that's all great. Um, I failing that, I might just go pop. One of these caps might just go pop. And let's get little Mister Resistor back. 
him back in place. So we took him away. And we'll just see if we can get this hard drive working again. Maybe we'll find some old treasure. There we go. I should, of course, be soldering this from the other side, but I am not taking this board off because I am lazy. Right, there we go. We've got some fresh new caps on there. And the old mini scribe 20 megabyte is thanking me. Uh, Michael Weir, hello. Um, better late than never. Well, to be honest, I've only been going for 37 minutes. I hardly call that late. Not with the length of my bloody live stream. Uh, yeah, how do I, how do I, I wonder if I can just add, can I add words to this thing here? Um, if I go to add, um, add text, there we go, and I'm going to call this one text free type 2, okay, and then where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it here, I'm going to say text, working on, whoops, on Mini scribe 20 megabyte hard drive. I don't need big H and big D, do I? Hard, hard drive. Um, okay. While I did that typing, by the way, um, it uh, I changed views. So I'm just going back to, what was it, side angle? No, it was... Uh, that one there. There it is. So I'll put that down here. Maybe there. How's that? How's that look? Is that nice? Can you see that? I hope you can see it. And then all I have to do is add that to all the other views. Add text that one. Okay. Okay. That's it. Okay, 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 there we go. Put that down there as well. And I'll do another one for the side angle. Sorry about this, guys. Uh, this is all the sort of stuff that you should uh, do when you're, um, um, you know, uh, when you're not live streaming. You should, should uh, do this uh, when people are, uh, are not actually you know, sitting there waiting for you to do something interesting. Uh, for that, I apologize with all of my heart, but, you know, you know what they say. Sorry, not sorry. All right, that'll do for now. That'll do. Okay. All right. Um, do, do, do. Right. Desk looks like mine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't... I, I mean, I, I did clean it before starting today, which kind of gives you an idea of how it looked before. But clean is a... You know, it's all a relative term, isn't it? You know. Um, it's because I'm a creative person. <laughs> um, all right. Okay, so... Um, hard drive. Here it is. Yippee. Let me just move this microscope out of the way, because the next stage in testing we need to actually bring a computer up here i really should move that first so there we go uh, how are we going for brightness here it's a little bit on the dark side um the dark side <clears throat> something something complete something something dark side i'm just going to turn the uh, brightness up here a bit i have to get up for that i can't use my fancy remote well wrong, wrong, wrong way there we go. Hopefully that's okay. Oh, Whew. Uh, did you get 
Andrew, did you get my last email? Uh, probably. Was that the one where, you... just remind me, remind me. Um, uh, I've been getting a lot of emails lately. Can you remind me the content of it? Uh, was it the, were you giving up on something? I think you were sending me an email, you were giving up on something. Is that, does that sound, does that sound right? All right, make it to see. So I've, I've um, obviously told people in the past that I really like uh, these old compact Macs, and I really like the Mac Plus. It's one of my favourites. But the thing I love about the SE is it's virtually just the Plus, but it's got ADB rather than that stupid keyboard connector. So that's what's great about these. Let's take the back off this. This is really loose, so just in case you're thinking like I've got super powerful fingers taking the back off, I don't. It's just, um, it's been taken off a million times before, so it's loose. Off comes the stupid shield. Now this actually has an old spinner hard drive in it. Oh, it's got, it's got a little power extender as well. I have no idea why, but it does. This must have had two drives in it at some stage. But this is good because this allows me to connect this um, at a bit of a distance. Let's get rid of that. We don't want things creating short circuits unintentionally. And we'll see if this spins up or pops. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this hopefully in line here so that when I switch it on, if it pops, you can see it. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I, I did. I def definitely did read your uh, your email, Andrew. You were basically saying that you have kind of your your uh, color classic, which was going uh, going. It was working uh, intermittently, and then you thought you solved it. You thought you actually uh, solved the intermittent issues. And then it, um, and then it just stopped working again, and you've given up on it. And you were asking if I knew anyone that might have a spare logic board for a color classic. Yes, I do remember, and I'm, I've been, I was thinking about it, but I just didn't reply to it. So I think you probably will be able to be able to find a spare color classic logic board from somewhere, because obviously there are a lot of people that go around doing the Mystic upgrade, and those people that do the Mystic upgrade they often end up with a spare color classic logic board. Now I actually have one here, but I have to keep it even though it's a spare because of the work that I do. I have to have a board here for doing comparisons and readings and stuff like that. So I don't really have a spare to, uh, to offer, but you may well find um, a, um, uh, that, a, uh, that someone out there who has done a mystic upgrade might have a color classic logic board. I would jump onto the Facebook groups and see what you can find. Um, okay, so... Hope the power extender has the right polarity. I, all the, it's all the colours are the same, so it should be fine. Um, right, so, so yeah, um, so yeah, Andrew is on the lookout for a colour classic logic board if, if you have one. Uh, Oz Retro Comp, hello, hello, Tone, welcome to the uh, to the live stream. I've actually got another two Amiga twelve hundreds here to recap at the moment, Tone. So uh, yeah, there'll be some. I might end up live streaming those. We'll see how we go. Could I fix yours? If you want to send it to me, more than happy to try. Um, right, so... Um, right. Okay. Well, I have to move this, I'm afraid, because I've got to plug power into this thing. So, what we're going to see... We're going to see potentially one or two things here. Uh, so, what does this Steve say? Uh, okay. Uh, that power extended, like the Y cable is may have shorted out a broken drive's capacitor. Well, this extender works. I mean, this, 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 I've just, I've just disconnected this from a working rig. Oh, wow, this one has 22 microfarad 16 volt capacitors as well. Obviously a common, so, common one for the old Molex connector. So, uh, we've got our, we've got our 47, we've got our 22. Let's just double check, double check that I've got these around the right way and that they're the right ones because 47, 16, yes. Um, and so one of two things are going to happen here. Either this is going, well, actually one of three things are going to happen here. Number one, it does nothing. Number two, it spins up. Number three, uh, one of those caps pops. Should I be sitting this close? Probably shouldn't be sitting this close, should I? Mm. You ready? <clears throat> You know, I get a bit freaked out doing this, you know, uh, when I, th I think things are about to pop. 
because it really scares me. You know, when you're having to discharge like a big high voltage capacitor, I know what's coming. It still freaks me out. Okay, you ready? I feel like it's really close to my hand. I know what I can do. No, I won't. Yes, I will. No, I won't. Hang on. I'm thinking if I have another power cable here, I can rig it up, up here so I can stand over there when I switch it on. Oh, stop being a coward, Bruce. Just do it. Goodness me. Anyone to think you'd never been zapped before. There we go. All right. Ready, city. Well, it didn't pop. Oh, spinning. It's, you know what it's doing now. It's making the hard drive not too happy noise. But let's see. It might start up. Now I haven't, I don't think I've set the sync rate on the uh, camera, so the screen's probably going to flicker. Oh, Steve has sort of, uh, Steve's got a video camera that he's uh, thinking about hanging on to. He's trying it out at the moment, and he's um, he's uh, um, uh, he was just mentioning the other day that the camera doesn't seem to sync to the different refresh rates. And I have to say that if you're filming a lot of these, it's a really handy feature to have, being able to adjust the refresh rate of your... Um, um, we go around that way? Jeez, I really painted myself in a corner here, didn't I? Um, eh, there we go. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, it's a really handy feature to have to be able to adjust the, uh, the refresh rate on your camera so that you don't get flicker on these old Macs. So they run it, these ones run, these particular ones run, I think, about 60, a little over 60. But, I mean, of course, some of the other ones are running at, like, 67 hertz and stuff like that. They're really weird. Right, so let's connect it up. Let's spin them around, and let's see if I can actually boot from it. And it's a 20 megabyte hard drive, so it's almost definitely come out of an AC or, a, you know, well, yeah, well, I think it has come out of an AC, but, ah! Uh, what about Bruce bumping that charge CRT? Ah! Um, yeah, uh, you know, be careful around charge CS CRTs, everyone. You know, do as I say, don't do as I do. And that old saying and things like that. Now, I'm going to get a uh, keyboard connected to this so that I can communicate with the computer if I need to. Two ADB ports back in the days when you used to get two. Then Apple got all stingy and started putting only one on. All right, switching them on. Uh, I probably mentioned this before, but just in case I didn't, geez, the refresh not too bad there. It's sort of sinking quite well. Um, maybe I have left it on. I might have left it on the right thing. Maybe that's why it's so freaking dark. Um, so... Um, this is my SE. Um, it's the original SE with the 800K floppy drive in there. You can hear the hard drive spinning. Going burr, burr. Not a good sign. As I said, mechanical failure is an issue. Yeah, it's trying. It is trying. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I'll put the mic close to it. So, yeah, what we have here is a failure to launch. Sorry about all the noise here. It's probably cracking like crazy. Uh, yeah, I'm going to just plug in a... Uh, there we go. Plug in a SCSI to SD. I might be able to boot this thing. Oh, doesn't like that system. And I'll probably just do this again. Yep. 
yeah, starting off with SCSI to SD now. So yeah, don't get excited about the hard drive. That's not the hard drive that's booting here. Oh dear. That's a shame because knowing that those capacitors did actually get that drive mechanically sort of running again. But Oh, is Mike here? Hello, Mike. Thank you for joining. I gotta go downstairs and mess with my broken hard drive now. That's fine, as long as you're still watching. Don't you start live streaming it. <laughs> okay. It's just sort of stopped. What are you why, why or is it is it having to think about something? This should this is system seven point one, which should work on this computer without any issue. But of course I think the dead hard drive isn't helping. While you are while you are farting around with a, a crappy miniscribe hard drive, these things were flaky when they were new. Mike, that is a very, very good question. And there is actually oh look at this. The answer to that was actually at the beginning of the stream, and that is that it's a customer sent it to me and asked if it could be uh, fixed up. At the end of the day, I can make no judgments when customers ask me to do these things. I just have to do them. Um, I, I think this particular person likes restoring things to kind of original condition, if at all possible. He really likes to have things with the original hard drives in them and all that sort of stuff. So given the fact that this is the hard drive that was in the computer, uh, he was, you know, wanting to wanting to get it running. So I, I, can, I can understand that. I mean, it, I know it's a little bit irrational, but, you know, I can, I can definitely understand it. So, what are we going to do, folks? I'll try one more time, and if it gets upset, we'll uh, we'll give up. I actually, I I really wanted for this live stream to bring my old five and a quarter inch Quantum eighty megabyte hard drive here that I used to have in my Mac too, but I can't remember where I've put it. It, it is somewhere, uh, and I I lost it, and then I found it again recently, and I've lost it again. I obviously put it away somewhere. I've got no idea where I put it, so. Um, I'm, I'm doing it with the extensions off this time, hopefully. Maybe. No, it's just sitting there. It's just sitting there. I don't think I've got much hope, honestly, while this hard drive is connected. I think it's just getting so upset. Um, oh. It's making access noises. Is it booting off the hard drive? It's booting off the friggin' hard drive. Maybe. Holy moly! It's booted off the hard drive. That's incredible. I'm impressed. Good old mini scribe. You go, you good thing, eh? Look at this chappy here. So we've got a little bit of history preserved in this hard drive, I dare say. Let's see if we can find out the last time it was accessed. Back it up. <laughs> yes, I know. Wow. Jeez, that's quite extraordinary. That is quite extraordinary. Um, Apple Tosh. Cute. Uh, this is not that hard drive. This is my hard drive. How long do you reckon it'll take to back the whole thing up? <laughs> I love the noise. I'm gonna I'm gonna record this, I tell you. Right. So let's have a look at what operating system we've got running on here. Does anyone tell? Oh well it's, it's a, definitely a variant of seven. Um let's have a look. Uh, I would think probably seven oh what do we got? Seven oh one. Yep. That's that's the system I would recommend. If someone was sort of saying what system should I stick on my my SE, I would say either go with six oh eight or seven oh one. Um Sure, you can go up to 7.1, but it'll run like a dog. So that would be my recommendation. Um, I'd love if the hard drive was full of one-bit grayscale porn. That would be funny. Right, let's uh, have a look at some view by date here. Uh, last modified. 2000? Seriously? 2002? Wow, so 18 years since someone did any work on this. It's later than I thought, um, and I guess not impossible. Well, this, I think there's uh, 
some potentially personal information here, so I should probably close that. Now, it's not my fault that this has personal information on it, but, you know. All right, so. Is there any space on this hard drive? Uh, not enough room. Piffle. How much do I need to get rid of? Three and a half megabytes. So that's one full hard drive. Uh, let's have a look at disk one, disk two. What about disk three? Is there any space on that one? 468. That's all right. Let's try that then. Now, if this looks like it's going to take like a year and a day, I will stop it and I'll do it at a later date because we have other things to do. I don't necessarily want you guys just to be sitting here watching something back up. I mean, it's only 20 megabytes. Here's a really interesting thing. When I, um, when I used to do work as a Mac tech, not for Apple, I worked for a third party person and I used to do um, uh, on site technical support, you know, for Macs. And we were mainly working with these ones. It was around about the time it was 1990. Three, I want to say, 93, 94, something like that, probably around that sort of time frame. Um, and we used to get a lot of Compact Max. The majority of what I worked on were Compact Max. And I used to wander around with a, um, uh, was, I think it was a 500 megabyte hard drive, which was so much more than anyone else had. And generally when we were doing any sort of technical support, the first thing we would do, we would rock up, we would plug our external hard drive in, we would boot up onto our external hard drive, holding down Shift Option Command Delete to boot up off the external. And then we would the first thing we'd do before we did anything was just copy the entire hard drive from the computer onto our own. That was virtually just like, so what that kind of meant is no matter what we ended up doing, we had a backup of their hard drive. And that was virtually the standard procedure that we would have. We would just rock up. And because most people had the original hard drives in there, so they had 20s, 40s, 80s, whatever. When we used to rock up with a 500 megabyte, um, the hard drive would just fit on there with, with you know, room to spare. So we just back the whole thing up. And then in a lot of cases, depending on what the problem was, we would then just format the hard drive, do a little check for bad blocks and stuff like that, and then just copy the whole thing back on again. Um, and that did often solve a lot of problems. But, you know, I mean, there are often other things to do as well. So anyhow, look at that. It's, it's not going too badly. Um, I, I, I feel like it's long enough for me to just talk and entertain. I can... See if I can find a few other things to talk about. Um, I might find some interesting things. So uh, I am cloning the hard drive. I'm just going to catch up on the chat here quickly. Um, still using Mac OS and Hustle and Money, so it's not unrealistic. It was being used in 2002. Totally, I would agree with that. Um, uh, actually, copying faster than I thought it would. <laughs> yes, me too. Uh, so. da, da, da. Uh, I'm doing a Friday night. Yes, you were watching a little uh, progress bar go across. Um, okay, so while we're waiting for that, I want to talk about something else here. Um, so I think the cat is out of the bag now. I think I'm allowed to talk about this. Um, I was told that I wasn't allowed to talk about it, but I think it's actually been released. I mean, I probably shouldn't, but um, the SCSI 2SD version 5.2 is on its way out of inertial computing. So just a, a quick hello if anyone from inertial computer is watching. Hello there. Um, so inertial computing are the main resellers now of the uh, version 5.5 SCSI to SD, which is what we're using to back this thing up with right now. And they also sell the 5.1 uh, and, and now the version 5.2. They've just done a huge order. I think it's about 3,000 of them. And they're going to start selling the version 5.2 uh, in, in, in quantity very soon. So, um, what is the smallest drive I've used? I can't remember. I used to have a hard drive connected up to an Apple IIe in the olden days, and I don't remember what the capacity was on the thing. I would say in modern Macs, or sorry, in, in the Mac world, 20 megabytes, probably the smallest drive I've ever worked with. But the one that I used to have connected my, to my IIe could well have been, um, um, could well have been smaller than that. But... As I mentioned before, as I learn new stuff, old stuff leaks out the ear. And um, so I've obviously learned some stuff and I've forgotten the capacity of that old hard drive. Um, so, 
Okay. Da, 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 da. Low, 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 so maybe miss it. I have a loaded and overclocked LC575 board, so maybe missed it. Yes, Andrew, I would say if you have the board, absolutely do it. Do the 640x480 mod to the analog board and uh, give your uh, give your classic a, a real kick in the pants. They uh, they go quite well. Uh, five megabyte Corvus. Okay. <laughs> um, Rode on 20. Just died the other day. Oh. Uh, Lane Brown, hello. Looks like I am late. The Mac is already fixed. This one wasn't broken. This is actually the hard drive. So we're actually about to go move to the computer fix at a moment. So at the moment, I'm just looking at the hard drive. I should actually make this a bit bigger because it's a little bit hard to read there, isn't it? I wonder if I can apply some shadows to this or something. It's a little bit... Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it would be good if I could shadow that. Can I shadow it? Anyone? Anyone? Uh, no, no effects as far as I can tell. Oh, here you are. Outline. Drop shadow. Oh, look at these tools. Fancy. Um, outline. It might be easier if I outline it, actually. There we go. That's that's a bit easier to see. I mean, I know it looks ugly, but it's readable. Okay, so... Um, um, so yeah, th this this is actually just the the uh, the hard drive uh, lane. So basically, what happened with this one is it was sent to me by a customer that wanted to uh, try and restore their computer back to original condition. So they had an old mini scribe twenty megabyte hard drive, but it had some blown capacitors on it. So I've replaced those capacitors, and thankfully they haven't blown again. And although we had a bit of a a, a rough start, um, the um, um, the the hard drive came to life and we're just backing everything up off it. So far, I haven't had a single read failure, touch wood. Um, so, uh, g'day from Arizona. Hello, Sorcerer Stan. Um, aliens exist. Yes, they do. Right here in uh, in my shed. Um, so, um, so anyhow, just jumping back here to the SCSI to SD situation. So, version 5.2 SCSI to SD, which is um, um, which is being uh, sold now, it's my understanding, it has some interesting new features. So, the version 5.1 used to have a little slot on the side, a little spot on the side for attaching a um, the 25-pin connector for actually plug it in externally. But since the version 5.5 came out, which works as an external one, no one's been buying the 5.1 to put that connector on there. If they want to run it externally, they've just been using the 5.5. So what they have done with the version 5.1 is they've, they've utilized that space to add some new features. Now, they, those features aren't available yet. The hardware is there. The software is not. So they're going to be making some firmware updates. So that'll be something to look out for. So anyhow, just letting people know that the version 5.2, the SCSI to a, a SD version 5.2, should be available to purchase on the Inertial Computing website. And um, it, uh, um, and as I say, there, there there are some really interesting new features coming to that uh, SCSI to SD uh, in the not too distant future. And those new features are, are basically linked to being able to get data onto the card via different methods other than just taking the card out and connecting it to uh, your modern Mac. So, um, did you try to work for SD card adapter? No, I haven't. Um, I could give you an easy option for Wi-Fi. Yes, no, I haven't actually tried that. I, I've heard a few people talk about it. I, I don't really transfer data to my Max, my vintage Max, that way. I have a tendency to move data around via SCSI hard drive um, and stuff like that. I mean, I can. I've got a, a, Mac, a G5 Mac up in my office that's loaded up with version with uh, version. Uh, OS 10.5 that will allow me to read these old Apple HFS formatted you know these cards and then I can just transfer data along that way and then just put the card I can then connect it to my SCSI to SD version 5.5 and then just copy it across via SCSI um, this is an interesting one um, I have made a little bit of mention of this but what we have here is actually a SCSI to SD version 4.2 for anyone who hasn't seen these Oh, excuse me. Oh, Steve's got exactly the same drive. Cool. So this is the 4.2. Now, so if you haven't seen this, this was the very last of the SCSI to SD that Michael McMaster, the creator of the SCSI to SD, it's the very last one that he made available on the GN, GNU, um, you know, public license thing. So in other words, 
all of the information about these is available online, as in what, um, as in the uh, what do they call them? Gerber files for the um, for the uh, the board, the component list, schematics, software, etc. is all available for these. And this I actually built myself. Uh, I have now built three of them, and I plan to build more. I don't really plan to build these to sell. I plan them to build for my own computers because, to be quite honest, if I were to sell these to people, they'd probably end up costing the same amount as buying them from inertial computing because of the amount of time it takes me to build them. But for someone like me who likes doing a little bit of, um, you know, surface mount soldering, they're a really handy way of me getting SCSI to SDs into my mountain of beige Max without um, having to spend a huge amount of money. So anyhow. We've copied all that data across, so we can actually, we can say goodnight to this one now. We will now move to the problems. Hi, Blurbs. Right. So, switching him off. Make everyone nervous again by putting my hands in the back of this computer without discharging the CRT. Okay. That's the version 5.5 SCSI to SD in the little plastic case. Very nice. When you buy one of these from inertial computing, you uh, you will get this case with it, so it's not like you have to pay extra for it. And as you can see, it's, it's I mean they're not particularly fast, but it is a really really nifty way of uh, you know connecting these up and getting moving data around from from compu vintage computer to vintage computer. Okay, so that's a success. That one that um, that uh, hard drive is uh, is happy. Well, I don't know if it's happy. It works long enough for us to get all the data off it. Can the SCSI version 4 be purchased as a kit? No. Um, no, it can't. Uh, I, I've kind of thought about doing that. I mean, there's a lot of really serious surface mount soldering. I'm working on a video at the moment, and I'm going to basically go through the whole process of building these from start to finish. Because the other thing is that when you get these and you buy the CPUs, which I have here, they're a little, um, they're a little arm chip. Uh, just the one. Yeah. So they're a little, uh, they're a little arm uh, system on a chip here, uh, and that says five. But if you open it up, there's actually six in here. So that's them there. Um, and when you buy them, they come completely empty, and you can't even put the SCSI to SD firmware on them um, because. In, in order to put the SCSI to SD firmware on them, you need uh, to connect it up to the USB, and these won't talk to USB unless they've got a USB bootloader installed on them. So it's more than just building the hardware, there is also the software side, but I am doing a video where I cover the whole thing from start to finish. Getting the board done, buying the components, uh, assembling the whole thing, and then getting the software onto the chip ready for use so that's coming so if anyone's interested that is coming but i would not recommend this for anyone who doesn't have micro soldering soldering experience because these are these are a significant soldering challenge which i love which is why i like building them okay right um so i'm going to connect this up now i don't think i'll bother connecting the hard drive because all i'm going to do is test the logic board now um, and so I'm just going to disconnect my power thing here and I'm going to do this in a way where I try not to actually damage the back of the CRT. Right, so let's look at the board which apparently does not work. Uh, uh, uh. If this works, this is going to really be annoying. If it's not the first time. There's so many times people send me things to fix and then I, I as soon as I try them they work it's like what was wrong with this oh it doesn't boot it's booting for me Ugh. what did you do nothing I think maybe your board just uh, needed to get out more needed a trip here all right so that's the logic board connected here by the power connector and no Steve I haven't bought the extender yet but I will be 
I didn't even I didn't even read that and I knew you were going to ask that. Um, I plan to actually try and get one today. I'm going to pop down to my local um, computer supplies place. They're bound to have ATF extender cables there. So I'm just going to go in and say, excuse me, good sir. Could you please provide me with your finest ATS extender cable? Um, and then that will allow me to have this board a little bit further away from the computer, which make a life a little bit easier. All right, so we've got... Um, we've got the board connected. It's not connected to the um, speaker, so it's not going to chime. It's not going to go bing. I think the it connects to the board, doesn't it? The speaker it certainly does on the... Yeah, there it is. All right, actually, I've got a speaker here. How about I do that? Hello, speaker. I refer this to the speaker. Okay, come on. Come on. Let's see if we can do this in a way where I don't accidentally fry myself or break anything. All right, speaker is connected. Uh, oh, I've got to change my text now, don't I? Text. Text. We're going to say working on... Here we go. Faulty. Oopsie. SE logic. Jig board. Okay. There we go. All updated. How good's that? Just got my big mess of wires kit. Awesome. So in that kit, you've got, what is it? A floppy MU and a uh, uh, Rominator 2. Uh, for those of you who don't know, a standard PC ATX, PC ATX extension cable can help uh, in extending the SE Classic cable to help you out. Yes, that's quite correct. So the ATX cable is, well, I'd say it's quite correct. He discovered it. I'm making it sound like I'm some authority on the thing. I'm not. Steve discovered it. Um, if, you, if you move the ATX cable to, I think it's one end or the other, I think you were saying, Steve, it, uh, it works as an extender. So that's really good. All right. We're going to switch this on. Yeah, why not? Um, let's get some power. And in. And then we'll just see what happens when we switch this on. Anyone hear that? Floppy MU bundle and two Rominators. That's awesome. I've only got one issue with the Rominator. Oh, wow, we've got horizontal lines. I've never seen that on an SE before. Wow. Um, uh, the um, the thing I, um, uh, I've, I don't like about the Rominator is I don't like the ch chime sound. It's the only thing I don't like about it. Right, so this isn't working, so that's good. Now, the first thing we try, of course, everyone should try, is put some different RAM in it. Uh, let's take some ram off. There is nothing safe about what I do here. But someone's got to do it. Yeah, it's. I'm pretty sure it's not normal too. Right, so I've taken the RAM out. Uh, this one here apparently works. Well, let's check before I rip the RAM off, I don't. Do -do -do -do. I'm not going to connect the speaker up. That was too hard. I'm just going to switch it on and see that it gives me a picture. Oh, it's not connected to the power. Jeez. Why didn't someone tell me? Yep, that's doing the old SE thing, so no problem there, folks. Uh, what's going on with this tub of jelly stuff everyone's talking about? I missed something there. I'll have to go back and watch this and look at the chat. Okay. So, we know the RAM on this one works, so I'm going to test this on this one. Oh, jeez, he snapped. Oh, boy, he snapped that big time. Yeah, okay. Uh, 
Right. So that board you can go over here for the moment. Would be good. And this one here. Just gonna try a different RAM. Always start with the obvious first. There we go. I'll plug the speaker in here, that would be a lot easier. And we'll see if it makes that farty noise again. The thing I always hate about working with Compact Max is, of course, how exposed you are to uh, mains power. This one's not as bad on these ones because there's actually a power supply, but there's still some scary old voltages going on up there. No farty noise. Wow! Jeez, I wish you could see this. That's a really interesting pattern. Um, it's not working. Just in case you didn't figure that out from my reaction. Right, so, well, we know it's not the RAM. We've eliminated the simple. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a bit of a visual inspection. So I'm just going to move this out of the way so that I have room on my desk. I'll put that there for the moment. Oh, we'll get to wrap. Oh, boy, old person. My neighbour is revving his car. I don't mind the noise, but I do mind that it's only a four-cylinder. Um, okay. Uh, that was the RAM for this one. This is the RAM for that one. You want to see what the pattern was? It was mainly black with a, a few sort of random vertical flecks of white. Um, but sorry, it just would have been too hard to spin the thing around. Okay, this RAM can go back in here. Alright. Macintosh SE. You know, I had someone on one of my live streams, uh, not one of my live streams, one of my pre-recorded videos, just one of my general soldering repair type videos rather than one of my Mac specific ones. But of course, I was working on a Mac and someone asked in the uh, chat um, why are you repairing 30 year old computers um, I kind of I don't even know if I bother to answer it but why indeed That's what I'm doing now why I don't know right so I'm gonna start off with a visual inspection um, I'm hoping that I find the problem and you know why because it's the lazy option I don't want to have to use my brain. I don't want to have to use my brain to figure out, out what a problem is. And because it, it could just need cleaning in the ultrasonic. So what I'm actually looking for at the moment is, well, if anything just sticks out, whether there might be, uh, see, as you can see here, we've got some trace corrosion going on here. Uh, that's not bad. That one there will still be fine. I don't believe that will be a problem. But the fact that there is some is cause for concern. Because we may find some worse. Uh, Right. So, yes, I just see the people there talking about engines there. I have three vehicles, two V6s and one V8. And I don't mind people driving four cylinders. What I mind is what this guy is doing with his four cylinder engine. Revving the crap out of it, thinking that he's got some sort of, you know, hot fancy car when it's not. He's basically just got, ooh. Ooh. Uh, he just got a really noisy, oh wow. Look at that. Where's that go to? Is that there? Gonna put the beepity beeper on here in a few places just to see what we can see. 
I'll put it here in the hope that you might be able to hear the beepity beeper. One day I would like to rig something up that shows something on the screen, but I'm not clever like people like Paul Daniels. So. Um, so let's just start off by exposing a little bit of this uh, black trace here and seeing what it looks like underneath. I have copper there, so that's promising. Am I going to the right one? There to there. No. I don't. Ow! I just cut myself. Ouchie. I'm just going to do this. Go from there. To there, yep, okay, that works. And there, to there, good. There, so where does this trace go? Where does it go? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, uh, I made this statement once before. Whenever you're holding a scalpel, don't forget that you're holding a scalpel. Okay. <laughs> um, always cook bacon nude. Okay. Ritke mod stream. For those who don't know the reference there, uh, uh, you know, uh, Greg Ritke, Grudy, as we know, uh, from Ritke Mods, uh, has on occasion injured himself during his live streams. Now, admittedly, I've got him beat today. Look at this shit. Yeah, out of focus. Um, so, um, I know that's terribly unhygienic, but let's stop bleeding let's see if we can find the same spot on here as here that's it there and it goes in under that one so it's one two one two three four five six i wonder if this guy's just revving his car because uh my chickens make so much noise on saturday mornings one two three four five so there's one underneath five so let's have a look here um yeah, so this is my board. Oh, it's black on this one as well. One, three, four, five. Interesting. I really should just get a band-aid, shouldn't I? This is crazy. Um, electrical tape. Actually, what about a bit of captain tape? Let's try that. scalpel uh, right okay <laughs> right all right okay what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna test this one on this well wow, this one looks even worse I know this one works though. So from there, does it? No, it doesn't go to there. I just wish I knew where this one goes. Well, it might go through to a V or underneath. Let's have a look. Yeah, I don't think it does. Okay, well, if it looks like that on this one and I know that one works, then it's probably okay. So we'll keep looking. Look for something more nasty. around the ram here generally with these ones that are black like that I usually know 
You can usually glance and go, yeah, it's black, but it's still carrying electricity. I'm looking for the one that's going to... Ooh. I don't want to crash up. It's still okay. Nasty, but it's still okay. Bup, bup, bup. But we are certainly finding uh, some ugliness on here. Make a little bit of space for myself here. In the old mini scrub hard drive. Now keep in mind, of course, if I don't fix this, I'm just going to abandon it and do something else. Just how I roll, man. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Looky, looky, looky here. We might have to take this uh, ram thingy off you. I'm doing it again. I'm doing stuff with the scalpel in my hand. No, no, that's not how you do it. Still haven't found a break. We're getting pretty close to it, though. These ones here are pretty badly corroded. And what's it like underneath this? Am I going to have to take this off? Am I? I definitely feel like we're getting warm. feel like uh, Steve from Mac 84 trying to uh, fix his uh, 2V 2CX or 2CI I don't remember which one and he just kept on finding these really nasty black traces scraping them off and they all worked it's like ah when is one of you going to be broken so I've got something to repair And so far, this is the ugliest bit I've seen here. Now, the fear is that the problem continues under this RAM SIM holder thingy. Ah, uh, TCX, yeah. Look how detailed this work is. Well, not so much. And one of the things I do like about working on an old Mac like this is how big the uh, traces are. Let's just see what the other side of the board looks like, because you never know. This side looks really good, actually. Which is kind of good, because it means we can sort of focus our attentions just on the other side. Uh, 
Here's your old. Looking pretty good, actually. I don't think we have any problems on this side of the board. So, um, steps. Uh, I really don't like the fact that we have all of this ugliness that's occurring under things that I can't, you know, so I can't see these traces. That's interesting. That's melted. Wasn't me. I haven't put a soldering on on this yet. There's the little real-time clock chip, which is... Uh, very difficult to get hold of today, unfortunately, and you can't just use a generic real-time clock chip on this. Very frustrating. Well, this has got to come off, no matter what. I've got to clean up those traces underneath it, so... Hooray. Won't that be fun? Let's get this all warmed up. Um, Unmachine, as it is affectionately known. And that's because when you press the button, it sounds like going, uh, I don't know. Why would the traces rot if there are no electrolytic caps to leak? Probably the way it was stored, it's probably stored in a damp environment, would be my guess. Um, yeah. So I've got to desolder all of these. No, 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 no. Change channel. I wouldn't blame you. Um, I need my goggles. I'll try and do this as quickly as possible for the sake of everyone watching. Oh, ah, mm. I need my uh, magnifying glasses, and I may have left them up in the house, so I may have to uh, just put up the little be right back thing because I can't do this with the nude eye. So um, I'm just going to put on the back soon thing and I will be back soon. Hello folks, all right. Right, so I'm just going to uh, put my goggles on and we will start lifting this socket off and seeing what we can see. Shows butt. should mention as I'm doing this, trying to do this without one of these suckery things, not worth it. You will either damage the board, damage the holder, go through like three feet of solder wick. I won't be able to read the chat much while I'm doing this because while I have these goggles on, I can't I can't see long distances. 
Some of them don't come off as easy as others. And I generally come back to those problem ones afterwards. Like that one. Compelling. Compelling stuff. Going to give this a little bit of a clear out every now and again. It's a good idea. Does this fit? Nope. Does this fit? Yep. Um, for those who who might have been following along at home, this used to be blue. It's now green because this is a new handle. The machine is the same, but it's a new handle. Uh, the old one stopped heating properly, so I replaced the handle. I've got a heater on the way as well, but the handle I was able to get quicker. The heater is coming from uh, somewhere else, and it's it's not uh, it's not hurrying. That's for sure. This handle does appear to be made better than the old one. Interesting. It is interesting how some of them just don't want to give it up. We passed the halfway point, by the way. I can tell you from uh, past experience that um, the worst thing in the world is when you go to take off a ram socket or a really long IC or something that takes you a really long time to do, like what I'm doing here. Um, and when you lift it off and you find underneath everything's pristine, that's really frustrating. When you lift it off and you find a massive trace break, you go, oh yeah, it was worth it, that's awesome. When you spend all this time and you look underneath and it's all pristine, you're like, oh man, what a waste of time. It's amazing what a difference it makes, you know, using this now compared to using it before when the uh, heater wasn't getting up to temp. Chalk and trees. Right, so that's all of the easy ones. Now I need to go back and get the uh, difficult ones ready. And I do that by adding some new solder to them. It generally helps. Uh, so we go here to, you say it will be fine. Yeah, something tells me you might be right, trainer. So. Uh, right. Focus. So I'm basically just going to look through here, find all the ones that uh, still have some solder in them and add some new solder to them. Oh, it seems, I've said this many times in my live streams before, it seems counterintuitive to add new solder to something you want to remove solder from, but it works. I missed one. I mean, I completely missed one. Look at this guy, I haven't even touched it. Stupid. Oh, I missed another one. Good gracious. And of course, if some of these just get really difficult with a sucker, I might try them with a bit of solder wick as a last resort. So stupid. Um, James Treviso, hello. 
I'm glad you caught it as well. Let's hope that I can uh, start doing something at least partially in partially interesting soon. Now I have to do this on the other one on the other board as well, but I'm going to save everyone from that. I'm not going to do that in this live stream because removing one of these I think is enough for everyone to endure. They're all looking pretty good now. I reckon I can. Ooh, I missed one. Missed one. a lot. We should be able to get this out now. Uh, what method am I going to use? Hmm. They often need a little bit of additional coaxing. Um, and so I just need to do that in a way that is uh, as non-destructive as possible. One still looks a little bit Soldery. But a knife. Yeah. I reckon that would work quite well. I've got a screwdriver, but I think it might be up in the main house. Let's see what I've got here. I've got all sorts of tools here, hanging up here, up in my little tool area. Yep, click, click, click. Coming off really well from that side. I guess I could use a bit of hot air. I don't want to damage any of these traces. Gonna go and have a look, see where it's still grabbing. It's grabbing somewhere. So wants to give. I can just feel it. But I don't want to break anything. Because that's not why people bring things to me. I'm guessing that right this very moment, there are some people giving some advice in the chat. And I should probably be reading it at this particular juncture. Okay. Ultra gentle. Well, thank you. No, that's... I'm going to start getting forceful soon. No more, Mr. Nice guy. Hey. Hey! 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 I didn't film that. Was it intentional? Did I not want you to see what I was doing? Or did I just forget to change cameras? Just in case anyone can hear the sound of chickens, 
Uh, that sound is actually the sound of chickens. Yeah, typical. Typical. The worst part was the bit that was exposed. But anyhow, it's got to be fixed anyway. It's got to be cleaned up. I don't want to have to take off the expansion slot. Okay. Madeline, thank you very much for that uh, super chat. That is greatly appreciated. Thank you. I do apologize for the fact that this is getting to be one of my more boring streams, but uh, yeah, it just happens. Um, so when I um, expose traces like this, I need to do one of two things. I either need to coat them afterwards or doing what I'm doing at the moment, which is um, getting, I'm tinning them basically, just getting solder onto the top of them. Um, and that is going to help protect them from the elements. Okay. Looks good. Looks good. Fully interested. Oh, that's nice to hear. Not bored at all. Excellent. I'm, uh, I'm succeeding in my task of trying to entertain some folks. Got 48 people watching at the moment, so hello to all 48 of you. Uh, if you're new, please jump on and say hello. If you ever have any questions for me, please just ask them. If I don't answer them, put the little ampersand Brankus creations there um, so that I'm more likely to see it. We lost a little bit of the uh, copper from that one. It'll be fine, but that was uh, obviously the one that was stopping the thing from coming out. And there as well. And there as well. But... Um, apart from that, there's my nice little nick from the screwdriver that I put in there. And there as well. Look at me, I've been brutal with this thing. See, someone said I was gentle, but look how heavy handed I was. Dealing out destruction. And I just feel, just looking at this thing, that the problems that it's having must be related to these um, yucky traces. It's just the most likely cause. When I just so don't like the look of these ones here that go underneath. Oh, geez, I'm not taking that off. No way. No way, Jose. Do -do -do. Yeah. <laughs> I like that pro tip there, Steve. Right. I'm just cleaning this off with the tissue because I want to put a little bit of UV solder mask on it. Um, and, uh, and it needs to be cleaned for that. Not too concerned about the actual tinned bits, but things like this little bit here where I've just exposed a little bit of copper or uh, here or on the edges here and how do we dry this UV solder mask pew pew Dun, dun, dun. 
Yes, yes. So the uh, this stuff is UV solar mask. It's so-called UV solar mask because it cures with UV light, which is what I'm shining on it right now. So as you can see, it started off as something that was wet. And uh, when I finish doing this, it will be dry. And it is essentially the same green stuff that you're looking at here that was originally covering those traces. Um, and um, yeah, it's, uh, it's the thing is that copper, um, obviously, which is on the traces, Copper oxidizes, copper, you know, sort of corrodes if it's just left to the elements. And so if you just get sort of copper, it will, it will basically corrode. So that's why they coat it with the uh, the green UV mask. It makes it airtight and seals the copper up, makes it last longer. Um, so when the copper gets exposed, I've got one of two things that I can do. I can either put UV mask on it, which is what I'm doing at the moment, or I can put solder on it, was what I did before. So if I'm dealing with large, really large areas, I'm probably, uh, or in the instance of this one here, where I was worried that some of these traces were perhaps getting a little bit thin from the damage, um, I put a little layer of solder onto them to sort of firm them up a little bit. And um, um, and then, yeah, UV solar mask for some of these smaller nicks. And I also use UV, UV solar mask to hold things in place. Sometimes when I'm doing repairs, I have to put new wires in place and... Uh, I put UV mask on the top, it just gives it that little bit of extra strength. And if we have a look at this now, you can see that this is basically dry now. The only way you're going to remove that now is by scraping it off. I, uh, I need to just very quickly... Uh, um, type something into our group chat because I've got here right okay now uh, I just received a, uh, a text from Jay um, I don't have time to do this at the moment but ultimately I want to Send him a text and say, how come you have time to send messages but not watch my stream? I'm going to be giving him a great deal of grief about that. I always watch his streams. Just ordered some. Excellent. Yeah, it's great stuff. I mean, it's, if you're going to be doing this sort of stuff, you've got to have this stuff around. It's really, really good. Uh, still, um, this computer still doesn't work, so, well, I think it doesn't work. I doubt, I haven't actually repaired anything, so I'm assuming it still doesn't work. Yes, if you don't have UV laser, you can put it in the sun for a while, that's exactly right. You can use a UV globe, I've got a UV globe here, you know, like the ones you have at discos. Um, you can use those. Um, they take a while under those globes, but it does do it if you leave them overnight or something like that. Uh, and then, but obviously, if you put it in, if you put in direct sunlight, this stuff cures in, you know, um, seconds. You know, put it out there for like a minute. That's all you need. All right. So I'm going to put this socket back on because I've cleaned up what I needed to clean up. We haven't really, I haven't really found a smoking gun yet. Um, I guess is the main thing. Uh, but there are a few things that I can still do with this. First of all, there are a bunch of socketed chips on here. Now, oftentimes, just taking a socketed chip out and putting it back in again is enough to actually get things working again. Because this hasn't spent any time in the ultrasonic cleaner either, so that's something I'll be doing later on too. Not likely to do it in this stream, because it'll take too long, but it is something I will probably do. Goggles. Back to the side view. Gotta make the little pins go in the little holes. So these early SEs, they had these uh, RAM holders that have um, plastic, little plastic things that hold the SIM in place. And then later on, Apple um, uh, brought out ones with little metal things that hold them in. And it makes such a difference. These plastic ones just snap all the time. 
Yay! That was a bit stubborn. Right, so now I've got to solder a whole bunch of things. Oh, no. We haven't seen you in a while, have we? Excuse me while I just uh, uh, introduce you, anyone who has not met this uh, little friend before. Come on. There we go. There we go. Uh, this is Bernadette. Um, so for anyone who has not uh, caught uh, Bernadette on the live streams before, um, this is my chicken that just comes, well, one of my chickens that comes in and says hello. The reason why only this one comes and says hello is because uh, she is small enough to get through the fence that we have that separates the chickens from the rest of the world. And uh, the other chickens aren't, they can't get through it, they can't get through it or over it. This little one can get through it and over it because she's so small. That's, she's fully grown, but she just, whatever, we found her, so I've got no idea what her lineage is. She's an Isa Brown of some description, but she's very small. So, uh, say hello to Bernadette, and uh, Bernadette, say hello. Um, you say hello? Uh, uh, um, and uh, uh, this is just a slight uh, pause in, uh, in proceedings, and in a moment we'll uh, return to our scheduled program. But, uh, yeah. All right. So, what now? Onto the microscope. You going up? Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's going to walk behind the TV now. I mean, the screen. Don't, please don't do that. Because that this monitor has a tendency to just black out sometimes. And I don't like it when that happens midstream. <laughs> so, all right. So, um, assuming that all the AV still works, I will continue with this. Um, and... And we'll start soldering this socket back on. I'm going to do one pin on that side. And, oh, you can't see it. One pin on this side. And then what I'll do is I'll push it from underneath while I melt that solder. Make sure it's sitting flush on the board. And that's enough to just hold it in place. That's there. That's flush. Let's try that side again. Flush. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that should be enough to just hold it into position for me to solder the rest. And I may do this with a microscope. I generally work faster with a microscope. Huh. Oh, Trini, you off, are you? Fairly well. Thank you for joining. My apologies for uh, streaming late in US. Uh, actually, you're in Canada, aren't you? But late in uh, Northern Hemisphere times because, uh, yeah, that's, you know, it's just the time that I do it. Okay. And if any, anyone is wondering why we named our chicken Bernadette, which is a really silly name for a chicken, it's because that's where we found her. We found her out the front of a school that's called St. Bernadette's. Catholic school. Right. Okay, let's start our journey across here. Get this done in no time, folks. Uh, how often do you change the tip on your iron when it breaks? <laughs> That's the last time I, I changed it. Snap. I was uh, soldering something and the, the, this, it snapped at kind of this point here. Just snap there. Um, if you're talking about uh, changing it as in because it gets old, uh, generally if, um, if the tip is not holding solder very well, or if it's really worn down from the shape that it's supposed to be. This one's getting quite worn because it gets used a lot. Um, I mean, I swap tips quite a lot, you know, for doing different tasks. I have, see, this one here is what I like to use for the majority of my soldering. But every now and again, if I'm working uh, in a very confined space on a board, I might change to a slightly different tip. I've got a thinner version of this one. This is a bevel. really like working with bevel tips. But I have this size bevel. I have a gigantic bevel. And then I have a tiny weeny bevel. This is the middle-sized one. It's the one I use most of the time. Um, I do sometimes use a, uh, uh, what do you call it? 
what are those pointy ones called? Uh, convex? No, hang on. A conical. I do sometimes use a bent conical tip um, that looks like this. Um, it's also worth pointing out that um, I use my soldering iron a lot. So these tips tend not to, you know, have a chance to oxidize that much. Um, one tip is that if you are only a casual solderer um, and you are not planning to use the soldering iron for a little while, um, leave some solder on the tip for storage. It will protect it. Um, I clean my tip constantly, but that's because I'm using the thing all the time. Uh, these are T12 tips. Uh, there's information in the uh, in the description about the T12 uh, tips. So these are tips made by Hacko, but um, there are other companies that make soldering irons that work with these T12 tips, and I love T12 tips. They are uh, uh, they're very easy to swap over even when the machine's hot. Uh, they are very, very good at heating efficiently because the tip itself is the heater. Whereas with a lot of soldering irons, they actually have um, the heater in the handle and then you just put a little bit of metal on top of that and the, the metal has to, you know, the heat has to then pass through it. Whereas the T12 tip is the heater. Um, I, uh, if you are on a budget and you don't want to buy a Hacko station, there's a link in there to a uh, generic, you know, like a budget um, station that uses T12 tips. And so what you can actually do with that is you can buy that budget station and then just buy the Hacko tips. And you're almost getting, like, you're almost getting as good as a Hacko when you do that because you've got the Hacko quality tips, but you've got the mach a different machine driving them. So, uh, Jay, hello. Nobody tell me nothing these days. I put a link in the chat, sir. I put a link in the chat. I saw you posting and I thought, if you've got time to post, why aren't you watching the stream, man? But there was a link in the chat, so I'm sorry you didn't see it. Um, uh, as you can see, I've got little captions on the page here now that show you what I'm actually doing today. Well, I should. Well, they're still there. Yeah, working on faulty SE logic board. So I've got a Macintosh SE logic board here, not an SE30. And Jay, you probably don't know much about these, but these aren't one of the ones that get uh, gets affected by capacitor leakage. Uh, however, I have found a few ugly looking traces on this one, which is the main concern that I have. But nothing so far looks broken. Um, and because I'm, I may still end up recapping it, you never know. Capacitors do fail. Um, but uh, So the few things that we want to try with this before we fire it up again, I, I did uh, clean up a few, uh, a few ugly traces, but they didn't appear to be broken. Uh, see, so see, we've got ones like this. You can see ugliness going on there. Uh, they don't look too crash hot, but they don't look broken either. So I'm not thinking that they, were, uh, they are the cause. But one of the things that can happen with these old uh, SEs is uh, just reseeding the ROMs can sometimes do it. So we're going to try that. I took off the... Uh, the there, were, there were some ugly traces underneath the uh, RAM slot, so I took that off. Um... Yeah, uh, it, well, again, not broken, but still needed to be cleaned up. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, I used the um machine today to get this thing off, and it worked beautifully with my new handle. Just going to have a look under the here to make sure that we don't have any ugly traces under the serial number. It all looks pretty good under there. It looks fine. So this is the only thing that really concerns me at the moment. Uh, I've got clearly some bad traces here and they're going underneath this expansion slot. Um, anyone who's ever been curious about this expansion slot here, um, there are cards around for them, but they're very, very rare these days. And no, this expander is not the same as the SE30. It's smaller. So SE30 expansion cards will not work in this. But SE30 expansion cards often do work in the 2SI. So... Um, there are, it's my understanding, some graphics cards and some network cards available or were available for the SE. But tell you what, they just never seem to come up for sale anymore. And if they do, they're like a gazillion dollars. Um, 
Uh, NK Morpheus, hello. I don't think I've said hello to you today. Uh, use Lido and created two partitions that worked fine until I realized the version of System 7.1 was in German. So I then reformatted and installed the English version. Yes, well, unless you're German. Um, just um, mentioning with formatting things, um, the, the, the generally the hard disk uh, formatting utilities that you can use, you've got Lido, you've got Hard Disk Toolkit, and you've got Silver Lining, and then there's also... Um, you can get the um, patched version of the Apple one. I never use the patched version of the Apple one. I pretty much use hard disk toolkit and nothing else. And that is probably because that's what I used back in the day. I'm just a fan of, of that, you know. I mean, no real other reason. I, I sometimes find it a little bit easier to use hard disk toolkit and silver lining. But... Um, okay, so... All right, so the next thing I'm going to do with this, I'm going to take all of these um, socketed, socketed chips out and then I'm going to put them back in again and then we're going to just test it out and see how it goes. Uh, if it still doesn't work, then the next thing I would probably do with this is chuck it into the ultrasonic cleaner um, uh, and then, you know, we'll probably just have to leave this one for today uh, only because it's, if I have to go into sort of like full-blown diagnostics on this, it, it really does get a bit on the boring side and you spend a lot of time looking at me going, Hmm. Hmm. And that gets a little dull. So, um, I'm removing these um, sockets with a tool used for taking pins out of watch bands. Uh, and I really like it. It works well. Okay, so socket. Out of the socket. Let's look under it, shall we? Three bad traces. No, that looks pretty good. Back in. Oh, I see my I see things flashing up here. Now it doesn't work. <laughs> Can you tell me what doesn't work means? Can you elaborate on doesn't work? What's up with the captain tape bandage? I cut myself with a scalpel before, and it just wouldn't stop bleeding, and I couldn't be bothered going up and getting a band aid. I did it on this this with the scalpel. This little corner bit here, you can't see. It. This little corner bit here, just right there, is it's just so sharp, and I just I I. Just, I virtually just, it's a brand new blade. I just brushed on it virtually and just cut a rooney. Uh, he was bleeding like a stuck Groody. It's terrible. We can't talk about Groody without him being here. Other than complaining that he's not here. I did actually watch his stream the other day, but I didn't actually jump in and say hello. Uh, it was a, a fairly morose live stream, and I sort of, uh, I didn't want, I just thought I will just let him have his say, and I won't go in and interrupt. Okay. And what have we got here? So that's three. That's what, what have we got there? That was ROM high, ROM low, and IWM, which stands for Integrated Wozniak Machine, um, which did things like um, control the floppy drive and stuff like that. Um, now, I need to get this thing out. This is a PLCC chip, and the way you remove these is more carefully, but I've actually got a specific tool for it here. Um, and this has two little things that go down the side here, like that, and then you squeeze it together, and then you give it a yank upwards. <laughs> like that, and out she comes, and you don't damage any of the pins. I'm just having a look at this, make sure it all looks nice. Looks nice. Pin one is indicated by a little blip in the middle of one side. Um, the way these work is pin one is there and then you count around in a clockwise direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 seven. Around there. And then the sockets have a little arrow on them to show where pin one goes. So when you put them back in, you know how they're supposed to go. All right. So this is another one of these, I haven't done anything streams. So, but let's see if it works anyway. Oh, thank you, Jay, for that. Is it an FDHD? No, it is not. This one, ah, uh, this board could well, well be from one. 
what we're testing it in, well, I'm going to be testing it in a, um, um, actually, I don't know that it is. I'm going to be testing it in uh, an old 800K one, so which is what I have. Well, that's the case that I have. I might just get some solder onto this while I'm at it. I exposed the, uh, the copper, as I said before, that has to be covered with some solder or some UV solder mask. Microscope. Added some flux to it. Sorry, my soldering iron went cold. There we go. Ease up again. I don't focus. Is it out for me? About 12 me knobs. There we go. That's better. Uh, let's get some wick. Trim this a bit. How? Now, what's actually this? So I, I, I don't know if it's this board or the other one because I've got two SE boards here at the moment from the same customer. One works, the other one doesn't. Um, so, as I say, this is the. Uh, I haven't done anything but try it anyway. Uh, I does need to be clean. We'll do that if this doesn't work. Um, let's go now, jump across to the side angle here and put that, balance that precariously over there. Oh. Mm. Grab this, put it over here. Uh, zoom out a little bit so that we can see the screen. You can see if any pretty patterns end up on this like they did before. Now, I'm not going to plug in the speaker so you won't hear any chime. We'll just be knowing whether it works based on looking at the pattern on the screen. How about I put some RAM in it, guys? Uh, uh. And that we do that. Right, so that is. I assume that's a one. Yeah, that's a one. That's 100 nanosecond. This one is 80. Okay, so just to set expectations. I do not think this will make any difference, and I think it's still broken. So, just just want you all to know. But I have a um, I have a bit of a a kind of a procedure that I follow when I'm doing repairs, and that is that I like to test regularly because sometimes you do a bunch of things, and then you come and you go to test it, and it's working, and you go, which one of those things that I just did fix the problem? Um, so I think it's a good idea to test, you know, fairly regularly, um, and then you uh, you can then be a bit more certain about what it is that you did that actually fixed the problem. Okay, right, we ready, set, a bing, and we'll see if we get that interesting pattern we had before. Oh, this is a new pattern. We've now got a checkerboard. Well, that's kind of good. Um, before it was giving me all sorts of weird stuff. Now I've actually just got a good old fashioned checkerboard. Reset button number. Right. Um, I'm going to connect the speaker to it. I just want to know if it made any sort of noise or if it's still doing that crackle. You know, it might have done a sad Mac noise or something like that. Do, 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 do. Get on there. Oh, wrong way around. Get on there. This speaker is in really bad nick, but hopefully it'll still make some noise. Silencio. See that? How cool is that? Woo! Okay, so. Well, at least we can play chess. 
Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so next thing into the ultrasonic cleaner, which I will not do right now because it makes so much noise and I can't think. Can't think. So, I do have something else I want to do with this live stream. Where are we up to? I've been going for over two hours, so it doesn't matter if I actually stop anytime soon because oh, I've been going for two hours. Um, so, art checker. What? This is true. This is true. Can't call it a checkerboard pattern and then say chess. Should call it a chessboard pattern, shouldn't I? Oh well. Oh well, oh well. So, there is one more thing that I'm going to do here today, um, just for a bit of fun. It's going to involve taking the hard drive out. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to put this on its, on its face. I'm going to whip this little fella out. Let's get rid of fuzzy cable, fluffy cable. At least it didn't blow up. Yes, that's always a plus. Okay, so this here is my SE board. And there's a fairly distinct difference with this one. If we zoom in, you'll see this being one of the earlier boards. Uh, it actually has this. Uh, you can see this little little board sticking on top of the board. So the very early versions of the Mac SE had little resistors on them that you had to cut in order to say whether you were going to have um, a one megabyte or one megabyte or two fifty six megabyte SIMs in there. And then Apple did this. They put this little board on top to make it so you didn't actually have to cut a resistor. You could use a jumper. So this little patch board that went on there, and you can see it's got like little resistors hanging off the end of it and everything. It's a real patch job. But they did that. Then the later versions, like the one we've just been working on, they actually have uh, just a jumper on the board itself. So they revised the board to include that jumper. So as I say, this is... Uh, this is one of the middle of the, you know, middle ones, not the earliest, but not the uh, later. Um, and I have also modified this one so that it holds a 2032 battery for the battery backup rather than a uh, half double A. I've stopped doing that to my boards. I generally did it to all of them in the early days, but I mainly don't do it now because those little 2032s just don't hold a charge very long. And my computers, I, I might, it might be a year goes by between working on them and then they just go flat. So the half double A's stu still do work quite well. The half double A's, you know, work for like 10 years and stuff like that. Um, we know that if you leave them too long, they explode on the board and do horrible things. So you obviously take them out if you're putting them away for long storage. But if you're just using them intermediately like I do, then I think the half double A's actually work quite well. And they're not too expensive if you buy them on eBay. Jeez, I'm talking fast today. Um... When you had the board flipped over earlier, I noticed a large uh, matte patch towards the rear ports. Yes, I, I saw that as well. It's, um, uh, I think someone's had a go at cleaning it. Something got some gunk on it or something like that. I did have a look around that area. There doesn't seem to be any trace issues, but it, it, yeah, it, it, it does. Someone has smeared something on it at some stage. So it has some sort of greasy something on there. So I think that's obviously another good reason to give it a clean in the, uh, the old Hutchisonic. So, um, so yeah, here's uh, my um, uh, SE logic board. Yay. Just putting this aside. I'm running out of places to put logic boards. Um, I am going to... Oh, wow. These screws are undone. I wonder why. Never done, in pro done it properly in the first place, maybe. So I'm going to undo the screws here that hold in the uh, drive... What would you call it? Assembly? Should we, shall we call it an assembly? So there are, let's just spin this around here, uh, two screws here, two screws here, and then that allows us to take the drive out. For anyone here who hasn't used an SE and isn't sure about that, this is it. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the main challenge with these is when you want to take this out, taking it out without wrecking your CRT, accidentally hitting the back of it and knocking the uh, little bit of glass off and uh, making the vacuum run away. Um, now, what I would pretty much say to anyone who's doing this at home is take this off. This is this little bracket. I don't usually do it because, again, it's, you know, do as I say, don't do as I do. I'm going to do it this time because I am demonstrating it. Uh, I undo that. I take this bracket. Oh, there's another one. Three screws. Bracket comes off. We end up with a little bit of extra space to work in here. 
We're walking to 7 Eleven, be back in just a moment. Okay, no worries. Um, so, now that I've taken that bracket out, I've got a little bit of extra space here at the top for just lifting this guy out. So, out comes the floppy drive and the hard drive on top. So, now I need to get rid of this and make some space for me to work at the tape. So, uh, uh. there we there. That, let's not drop it. I mean, it would make a good live stream, but yeah, I don't want to drop it. So, now this hard drive works, I know, because I put it in there. It's a quantum. You can just tell by looking at it. Oh, and the fact that it has quantum written there, but that's another story. You probably can't read that. Um, lovely fall evening in California for fixing old Max. Well, that's, that is very good to hear. Um, it's actually quite warm here. It's 27 degrees in the Celsius scale here and where I am, because we are getting to the end of spring. Um, we've got a very, very hot day coming up on Monday, which is going to be fun, so I probably won't be down in the shed when that happens. Um, so... Uh, I can't remember if I've done the reconditioning on this floppy drive. Uh, I'm going to just quick, quickly have a look because I'm just curious. Let's just get a big screwdriver here. Uh, 256K, you said 256 meg. Oopsie. Yeah, I do that all, all the time. It's the same as when I talk about hard drives and these things and I go, oh, this is a 250 gig hard drive. And it's like, no, 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 no. 250 meg hard drive. Or, uh, yeah, 20 gig. Right, so all I want to do is I just want to have a look at this eject mechanism, see if I've replaced the cog. Um, whoop, oh, crud. Whoopsie. All right. Uh, that's not the screwdriver I want. These are not the droids you're looking for. Move along. There it is. Oh, I see a little bit of uh, a lubricant there, so this is probably has been done by me. But we will check anyway. These are things that I should record. I record all this sort of stuff when I'm working on customers' boards, but I do have a tendency to forget to do this stuff sometimes when I'm working on my own things. Uh... Any reason why these early SEs can't use 16 megabytes of RAM? Yes, and that is that they, uh, uh, they never built them to actually do that, to take that. Uh, oh, you can put the 16 meg in there. They will either not work. Oh, yeah, this has got a new cog in it. They will either not work um, or they will uh, just only recognize four. Um, they, they, you know, they're, um, I, I don't know how many... Uh, how many bits the the memory they they can you know the, what's built into the ROMs and that you know how obviously the old SE thirties they weren't thirty two bit clean so they could read up to eight um, and uh, uh, but if you wanted to go over eight you had to you know either change the ROMs or uh, uh, use a little tool called Mode thirty two but um, uh, but yeah the old the old Mac Plus the old uh, SE, the classic, all of these have just got a four megabyte cap built into the ROMs. They won't they won't address any more than that. So, uh, and even with the classic two, that's got a ten megabyte cap on it. Um, what else? The color classic. That one's got is it a ten? Yeah, ten megabyte cap on it. And um, with the old classic, I mean, you, you 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 put twelve megabytes in there or something, it still only shows you ten. Frustrating. Now, keep in mind, of course, with these old SEs, um, four megabytes is a lot of RAM back then. So, uh, yeah. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. And these you would have bought with one in them. Um, they would have had all four four of the memory banks populated with 256k sims. So you would have had one megabyte, and that's how you would have bought it. And then people could get adventurous and expand it up to four. Uh, here we've got little 
the little jumpers that tell us what uh, SCSI ID this is. I am actually working on a video on, for SCSI as well, so that's something that's going to be coming up in the future, where I basically go in and explain the whole situation with SCSI and how it works. But these little jumpers here are how you set the SCSI ID. It is usually identified by A0, A1, and A2. And this one, yeah, there we are. A0, A1, and A2. So that's these, these last three little, um, what do you call these things? Um, I want to say jumpers, but I can't think of it. And then you put these little shunts on to uh, set your SCSI ID. I'm working on a video that will go through all of that if you're interested. If you're not interested, don't watch it. Yes, I can understand wanting to be in a hot shed rather than clearing out drains. I am, I'm with you there. Um, so, yeah. Macintosh TV, eight megabytes. Yeah, I know that was a bit of an insult, wasn't it? That was Apple taking a steaming dump on us. <laughs> now they just sold a RAM on the board. So you've got no choice. This is very true. You know, the only choice you have is to choose the amount of RAM you want forever right at the time you buy it, which is, yeah, that's all about making disposable Macs. Now, if you want to hear a group of people ranting about that, watch yesterday's um, Mac Yak um, with uh, uh, House of Moth with Jay, uh, with Steve, Mac84, uh, we had we had a full house yesterday. We had uh, Grudy, Greg Ritke, Ritke Mods. We had Mike from Mike's Mac Shack. We had uh, uh, Greg Thompson, GT. We had... Oh, who am I forgetting? Dana. Dana Does Stuff was there. Uh, we had a special guest. We had um, um, uh, Madeline McAndrews was on there. And have I missed anyone? If I have, my apologies. Um, I, I feel like I got everyone, but I'm not sure. Um... And uh, yeah, we basically talked about how Apple's new Macs are, uh, yeah, not very open uh, in terms of uh, upgrades and stuff like that. Very frustrating. Um, the 68K processor supports up to 16 megabytes, maybe flashing the ROM to include the code. And the classic ROM will expand the SC to 10 megabytes. Also, it's the classic 2 ROM, and the classic 2 was a 68030, um, not the 68000. So... Um, now, of course, yeah, I mean, if so, I'm sure there is some clever cookie out there that could go in and, and um, read the ROMs and alter them to maybe uh, read more than four megabytes. But I'll be honest, when I'm dealing with a 68K chip, a 68000, um, putting an extra RAM in is probably not going to make much difference. I mean, you're not going to be able to run particularly memory-hungry applications on it anyway because, you know, they're so... Um, now, what I need to do now is grab myself this here and hope that I'm not flashing my underwear. There we go. This is my little, little bag of connectors. So what I'm basically going to do now is I'm going to install this in my SE, because why not? Um... Do, do, do. Right, just checking here. Oh, yes, I, I should actually mention that's I, I my apologies. Um, Steve, I totally didn't mention there that you did a whole video on the whole uh, whole situation. Um, oh, which way around did this go? This was upside down, wasn't it? So it's hang on that way went there. So I want there like so i want this upside down this one's going to be one to mount it upside down i want the ca cable to not have to twist it around the other way i want it the same orientation as the hard drive that was in there so this is a quantum it's a 1.2 gigabyte any of the hard drives that i have if i don't have if it's not written on the on the device i always stick a label on there so i know the capacity of them because there's nothing worse than not knowing same with ram sims so i'm going to mount this here uh unfortunately because of where these holes are positioned i can probably only mount it with two mounting screws that should be enough these things are very light um 
because these aren't quite in the right position. Consarn it. They're in the right position for the bottom screws, but they're not in the right position for the side screws. And there's nothing for me to screw it into for the underside. There's no holes. No holes. So, I'm going to get some of these little guys. One, two, three. Four. Oh, I think I'm going to need to buy more of these. Last time I bought these, they took like about three months to arrive, so I better order them now, haven't I? Mm -hmm. uh, and then we need a few of these little screws. Here we are, a whole bunch of them. So, I only need two of them. I, I just finished saying that I can only hold it up with two. And then I pulled four of these things out. And I can't even use lack of sleep as an excuse. I slept really well last night. If they're by overheating I'm, uh, iMac 2010, 27 inch. Uh, Main types glass pane is probably preferable to thin Max with their taped on glass. Couldn't agree with you more. Congratulations on doing the work. Uh, Nate, and uh, yes, I agree with you totally. Removing those ones that are magnetized is just a delight. It's just so easy. And then you just undo, undo the screws and away it comes. Um, opening things up, being able to open things up. I'm a huge fan. It's one of the reasons why I like the Unibody Max. I mean, opening those up and getting the board out is so easy. So this is going to be... It's going to be... It's going to be... It's going to be... Uh, there. Maybe, yeah, like that. Um, so I'm going to put that screw through there. There we go. I will tighten that up once it's actually in situ. If I miss anything in the chat that you want me to actually respond to, uh, don't be afraid to put it in again or do the at Brankus Creations to make it stand out. Because, um, you know, I do miss things. Ross Brandon, hello. Glad I finally made it to a live stream. Feels like I'm, I'm in on the action. Well, you are in on the action. So there you go. Interactive. I, I just spoke to you. Um, so, um, I, oh, I've got to update this. Um, let me update my text here because it's not, it's not correct anymore. Um, I'm going to say, oh, 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 I'm going to say installing, oops, helps if you spell it right, installing a scuzzy to in a Mac SE. Okay, there we go. And when I'm typing there, when I did the two, it changed camera angles, so I really should use different keys for the quick key, shouldn't I? All right, let's get this in place. Um, the old SCSI to SD, this is one, this is one of the ones that I built. Uh, so it's, uh, it's 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 very rewarding when you build your own, um, but it is difficult. It's not a particularly easy undertaking. Um, I have all of the t the components and tools here to make a grand total of ten of them. Um, I will buy a load more because I want to make more than ten in the future because I have more than ten vintage Macs that need hard drives. But um, uh, I didn't want to buy any more than 10 because I didn't know if I was going to be able to get them to work. Pi 400 seems like uh, a great gift for any young child to get them interested in computer science. Couldn't agree more. In actual fact, there's a, um, there's a kit, a Pi kit, uh, which you probably are aware of, that... Um, allows you to build a little Minecraft computer. Comes with a case, comes with, you know, keyboard controllers, uh, all the wires, it comes with a Raspberry Pi, 
and you essentially build the whole computer. You build the case, you build the computer, and um, and then you install Minecraft on it and play it. And then, and I just think it's a really great thing. Obviously, it's a scaled down version of Minecraft that'll work on a Pi. But I think I just think it's the sort of thing that just you know really get young kids interested. I think it's fantastic. That sort of stuff is so good. Um, right, so that's it for the mounting. As I say, I only mount it from two screws, but I don't go on anywhere. That's a, that's the safest houses that is. Um, let's um, let's screw these two screws in. Hold this top bracket onto the uh, bottom bracket. Uh, uh, so I can substitute a 3.3 microfarad 6 point volt cap with 3.350 volt. Uh, look, yes, that's that's going up a long way. What sort of cap is it? I can't do this up. Why can't I do this up? Ah, works on that side, just not on the other side. It's not the right screw. Um, uh, Arduino clones. Joe Green, hello, it's going well. I hope it's going well with you too. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm a huge fan of the Raspberry Pi. I, I own probably uh, four of them. Um, and I, I, I love, I mean, what I would love to start seeing is I would love to start seeing some really inexpensive um, Raspberry Pi cases coming out with keyboards and mice or trackpads and all, you know, LCD screens. They are out there at the moment, but they cost so much more than the Raspberry Pi. So you can actually buy like a laptop case um, that has, I, I think it has a battery in it or whatever, and it has an LCD screen and a trackpad and a keyboard, and you lift it up and you put the Raspberry Pi in it. So you put the guts in it and you turn, you essentially make yourself a little Raspberry Pi laptop, which I think is a fantastic idea. But the thing that's stopping it is that one of the most expensive parts is that LCD screen. So the case is actually really expensive. By the time you put the Raspberry Pi in it, you're probably um, paying more than you would for a really cheap laptop, you know, like a really cheap Intel laptop. But I just adore the Raspberry Pi. And, you know, for a lot of people, you, you could use a Raspberry Pi for most things that people do. Jumping on and browsing the web, you know, there's a version of Chrome on, um, on the Raspberry Pi operating system. Whatever it is, the form of it's, I can't remember which form of Linux is it is it Ubuntu or something like that. I can't remember, but whatever it is, um, um, it's um, yeah. You can you can browse the web. You can put LibreOffice on there, which of course is that uh, open source Office software package. Um, fantastic, fantastic little things. Um, I wish they existed when I was young. And of course, you can program on them as well, um, and you can set up a Raspberry Pi to control your house and do all sorts of things fantastic things uh if you know how to fix the uh scuzzy hang on i just gotta get close to you it's a low voltage but it's the closest i have available yeah so crazy tech reviews uh what sort of capacitor is it can you tell me that is it an electrolytic is it a uh, ceramic is it a tantalum um so uh i was just wondering if you know how to fix the scuzzy to sd problem that i'm having it gets stuck in a loop during the boot process, and that sounds a lot like a system issue rather than SCSI to SD. Um, more than anything, was it working and now it's not working anymore, or is it just always work like that? Um, the Pi 400 is so neat; it's like a Commodore 64 and 8-bit machine. I agree. I, I'm getting one. I, I haven't bought one yet, but I'm going to buy one of the Pi 400 because I just think it is so cool. Just get. I mean, just any HDMI monitor or TV or whatever like that, plug it in and you've got yourself a little computer there. Fantastic little things. Awesome. Uh, do you sell any of the stuff that you fix? Uh, most of what I fix, I fix either for myself or for customers. So the stuff for customers that I fix, um, obviously it's theirs, it's not mine. And for the stuff myself that I fix, um, sometimes I do sell it. If I have more than one of something, I do like to collect this stuff. Uh, for instance, I have two Power Mac 7600s. Um, I don't need two 7600s. I want one, but I don't need two. So I'll probably end up selling one of those soon. I had two Mac 2CIs. I sold one of those. Um, I swapped it, actually. I swapped the 2CI for a 2CX because I didn't have a 2CX. So yes, I do sometimes sell the stuff that I fix, um, unless it's something that I don't have, and then I hang on to it for my collection because I am one of those nutty people. The collects things okay well this is mounted oh pretty yeah it's nice um 
And now we're going to put it into the computer and we're going to fire it up and I'm going to put an operating system on it and we'll format it and put an operating system on it. Um, let's pop it in here. Popity pop. Uh, incidentally, it's got an 8 gigabyte SD card. Sorry, 16 gigabyte SD card in it. But I'm only going to format probably 8. Oh, I'm only going to use 8 gigabytes of it. And the reason for that is that I'm going to put probably System 701 on this computer. And the largest partition it can have is 2 gigabytes. So if I do 16 and then I split that into 2 gigabyte partitions, that will have 8 2 gigabyte drives on the desktop. And in my humble opinion, that is way more than is needed. So um, I am probably just going to, um, I'll just have 8 gigabytes of usable space there and I'll, I'll partition that into uh, uh, four two gigabyte partitions, and that's heaps. You know, I mean, seriously, on a on a computer like this, I can probably put every single piece of software that was ever made to work on this on eight gigabytes. Um, so it's working, but now I can't get it to work, no matter how many times I attempt to reinstall it. Okay, whereas in reinstall the operating system. Hmm. Um, have you done like a you know, like a Norton's check on the disk to see it's not like a damaged system. When you say reinstall, you're putting a whole fresh new system on there. Um, another thing you need to be careful of that happens with Mac sometimes, if you start messing around with operating your system folders, if you have more than one system folder on there, sometimes it'll boot from the wrong system folder. And if the system folder is not the right one for it, it might just sort of get stuck in a loop. Um, but I'm, I'm guessing here, I mean, seriously, there are so many things it could potentially be. It's, it's very hard for me to know for certain. Um, let's plug that in there. I probably don't need to connect the Molex to this, but I'm going to anyway. It's so weird. I don't know why I have this connector. I only need a normal connector here, but well. Uh, now, I hid this over here, didn't I? Yep, this is my board. It has four megabytes in it. And this is interesting. This has these newer chips on them that only have newer SIMs that only have two chips on them. It works. Works fine. I'm sure there are people that have said you can't use them on the SE, but you can on this one. Um, I can't remember if this is one of the ones you connect before or after. SE30 you connected before. I think the SE you connected after. So slide this in here, like this, see that? Ouch. Uh. Uh. Gonna connect some power up to this here. And she goes, let's click connect the floppy drive, even though I have zero intentions of using it. And then finally, the SCSI to SD, which I have set on SCSI ID 0. It is my intention to, I am plugging, trying to plug the SCSI hard drive into the second floppy drive slot. That is not going to work. Uh, upper drive, lower drive. Yep, yeah, okay, there we go. So, um, all looks good. Um, will I bother putting the back on, or do I want to risk it? So now I'm going to plug in my 5.5 SCSI 2 SD. Now, I just have a curious question for folks. Um, who here owns a SCSI 2 SD at all? You know, just sort of just put a yes in the chat if you own a SCSI 2 SD. Please. Uh, yes, uh, okay, I've done it from the other drive and I get stuck. You know, I mean, my suggestion, NK Morpheus, would be the first thing to do is, you know, if you boot from an external hard drive or something like that, check the drive to make sure that there aren't extra system folders in there somewhere. Just do a search for system folder. Uh, make sure there's only one on there and then put one new fresh one on there. Uh, probably wouldn't hurt to do a bit of Norton's check on the disk as well. Uh, David Stiles here. When did you turn up? There he is. I see you up there. Welcome, David. Ah, uh, all right. Um, yes, bunches. Yes, yes, yes. 
Yes, version 5, 5.1 and 5.5. Okay, so Michael, you answered the next question I was going to ask, is of those people that do have a SCSI to SD, do you own a 5.5? And if you don't own a 5.5, do you want a 5.5? And the reason why I ask that is I've, I've potentially got an opportunity to get a whole bunch of them for resale here, but I just don't know how many people want the 5.5. I'm not sure what the demand's like. Uh, I have one and I love it. I don't need any more than one. One's all I need, but I consider the 5.5 now an absolutely essential item. Is it working yet? No. No, we're working on a different one. I, I, uh, I'm I, going to clean that board that wasn't working. What I'm doing now, if you have a look at the um, little caption there, I'm installing a SCSI to SD in my Mac SE because I feel like it. Let's get some uh, keyboard going. Yes, going here. Where's the cable? Which end of the cable? Not that end. Let's try this end. There we go. Isn't that nice? So let's plug that in. And I'm going to spin this at around a little bit of an angle just so that I can see it as well as you guys. There we go. And then we'll switch them on. Nice noise there because this one works because I know it works because it's my. Uh, it should just boot straight up off the external SCSI to S, SCSI to. To SD because the internal one has no system or it's not formatted or anything like that. Um, what is a good price to pay for one of the SEs? The original SC, see, they come in a variety of flavors. There's this dual floppy SC, there's in the floppy, there's the SE with a hard drive, there's an SC um, FDHD, and of course, there's the SE30, which is a completely different type. Now, if you're getting one with the keyboard, where's Steve? Is Steve in the chat? He's got a good idea for pricing. And of course, the other thing is that we pay very different amounts for them here in Australia. You're probably going to be looking at paying easily a couple of hundred dollars for one of these here in Australia at the moment. The market's a bit silly. You might even end up paying more. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, yes, the, uh, the SCSI 2SD is not formatted. I... That's not a chicken, that's a pigeon. What are you doing here? Who do you think you are? Excuse me. But this is just not a, a, a free-for-all for pigeons. So leave. Immediately. Um, so, um, it's just hanging, isn't it? It doesn't seem to be particularly happy with what's going on with that. Yeah, no, it's not Bernie. Bernie was here before, you missed out. Sorry about that, Joe. I introduced Bernie to uh, to the viewers and so for people who hadn't met Bernie yet, but there's this very persistent pigeon just sitting there. What are you what are you what are you waiting for? What do you expect to happen? And if you poop on that board, I'll be unhappy. It's my board; it's not a customer's, but I still don't want poop on it. Address error. That's normally what happens with uh, memory stuff and bad uh, control panels and things like that. So I'm going to hold down the shift key. Start with the extensions off. It doesn't say extensions off, does it? It's meant to say extensions off, I think. It's pretty bleak, isn't it? It's it's flashing. I can see it flashing. It is doing something. Now it stopped flashing. Uh, is this keyboard stuff? I mean, the mouse works. And the mouse is coming out of the keyboard. Uh, yeah, I mean, buying an SE, um, uh, Mac SE from eWaste Place for one or two US dollars, it doesn't work. Oh, that's no good. But I can tell you one thing. Assuming the battery hasn't exploded inside it, you can probably get it working. Um... What do you reckon's going on with this, eh? Is it broken now? Probably. But what I may end up doing, I'm, I've got a old-fashioned... Okay, the light's just on. Doing something. I'm just concerned that when I held down the shift key, it didn't say extensions off. Down the light, yep. The light's kind of, sort of flickering. A lot of flickering. Oh, shit, you like that? How good's that? 
I did that just for you guys. All right. I want to do just one last thing here, just quickly. I'm going to try pressing the shift key again. I had other things on the keyboard. Hmm. And we know all these things work because we had them plugged in before uh, using that other hard drive. Um, we did boot from this, didn't we? No, okay, it's not showing extensions off. So, um, last time we booted off that 20 meg. Just want to try something. I've got another hard drive, so I am just going to pop up to the house. I'll be right back. So, my apologies, people, but this I know exactly where this is, what I need to get, so I'll be right back, and I will go back to Um, so, side angle, there we go. I banged the camera on the way in, so the view may well have changed. Oh dear. Do you have to designate if your video is for kids or not? Uh, there are two, you essentially have a choice. Is it made for kids or not? And if it's made for kids, you can't even have a live chat. Um, the, uh, you know, sort of, but having said that, what I I'm doing, I'm basically saying is not made for kids. Now, having said that, I don't swear in it. Usually I did today. Whoopsie. Um, I don't swear in it. You know, uh, I probably do a bit of slightly dangerous stuff with AC voltage, which is not ideal, but, um, you know, I, I don't really make stuff that you know, I mean, like I've got a, I've got a nephew, and uh, he's watched some of my live streams before. I don't want to say sort of really offensive stuff when he's watching, but I, it's not made for kids, and that's generally what you have to do with most of these. Because if you are saying it is made for kids, it, they, they're quite strict with that sort of stuff. You know, they're expecting the content to be very, uh, um, you know, stuff like the Wiggles and things like that. <clears throat> Chris doesn't swear ever. <laughs> I every now and again do little. Uh, uh, Private live streams for my fellow Mac Yakers. I don't. Uh, I'm. I'll be working on something that I, I, you know, I don't think is going to work or something like that. And I don't think it'll make a particularly interesting live stream. And uh, yeah, I have been known to cuss a little during those. Just from time to time. Hey, hey, hey! What's what's going on? Hey. 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 Have I not connected the power? Ah, didn't spin up before. It's spinning up now. It's 
So we're doing old traditional method here. We've got a uh, an old spinner hard drive. Um, I think I have operating systems on this. I've at least got enough on there that I'll be able to get this booting so then I can run the SCSI 2SD externally. It's this SCSI 2SD that I've got this version 5.5, this external, this cops a real beating. You know, this really gets used so much by me and things get restarted and stuff. So it probably just needs a good old Norton's on it. Yes, uh, Google uh, has changed its policies. This is the, the whole thing about is the video made for kids. That's um, something that was added relatively recently. And this is system 7.1 on this hard drive as well. I'm pretty sure. Um, I can hear it clicking. I'm holding it on my leg at the moment. You don't have a stash of boot floppies nearby. Um, I've got a 605. I have to go back up the house for that though. But I'm 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 feeling moderately optimistic. I've got the floppy emu. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. It's got system six or something on it. Are oh, you so and so? I wonder if this actually has a problem. This SE. I mean, it used to work. We certainly saw it boot from that twenty megabyte. It's like it doesn't like system system. What was it? I'm sure this is 7.1. All right. Now, if you people will indulge me, um, I am going to go back up to the house. As long as you don't mind waiting just a couple of minutes, I am going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to reconfigure my SCSI to SD to boot into system 7, not 7.1. I think I'll have more success with that. I will also bring down some floppies with systems on them and we can use that as a last resort. So, um, uh, we will be offended if you don't go to the house. Okay, I'm pleased to hear that. All right, I will be back soon. Uh, this really this really won't take me long. Um, so just uh, hit tight. <laughs>
Ah. So, same SCSI to SD. This time I have enabled the partition I have on here is 7.1 loaded. I'm hoping I might have more luck with that. Now, assuming I don't have more luck with that, I then brought down my old system 6.04 in the handwriting there, 6.04. And we have uh, the tour disc is gone, unfortunately, but I have the printing tools disc. I have the system tools disc, the utilities disc one and utilities disc two, and all on 800k floppy. So isn't that exciting? When I kept this, I'm like, why am I keeping this? And I'm so glad I did. <laughs> Having some great success there. Looks like the floppy's going to be the uh, the best course of action, doesn't it? Giving me bloody... <laughs> doesn't like that system. All right. So, what have we got here? I've got, oh, let's go to the old utilities disk, shall we? Put it in that slot there, because that's where the floppy drive is. I hope the floppy drive works. <sighs> yeah. What? Let's start it may be damaged. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Try the system tool disk. I vaguely remember the system tool disk doesn't work on this one. Vaguely. Uh, if this doesn't work, I'm giving up because this is just driving me bananas. Ah! 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 There is one last thing I can try. Actually, I might even be able to do it from here if I've got a cable. I've got a USB micro, micro USB cable. Um, I do have one. It's just a question of where it is. What's that? That's a webcam. Uh, I had it for recharging a keyboard. Maybe I left it with the keyboard. Nope, that would be way too logical. Uh, is it falling down here? Oh, that looks like a micro SD. What are you connected to? Where do you go? Yeah. Is it micro? It is micro. Yes. So, last resort. Last resort. Fire up the SCSI to SCSI to the thing. Applications, SCSI to SD, SCSI to SD utility. I know you can't see this. Um, plug the little chap in. File, load from device. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm just loading all of the information from the SCSI to SD uh, onto the old. Um, um, into the SCSI utility, I can then make alterations to it. So I am going to leave that one there. System six, I'm going to change that to ID five, six. There we go. The higher the ID. Oh. Oh, maybe not. I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. Um, just uh, don't need system 7.5. I'd be messing with that. That will change to that should be right. So I've got three, two, five, okay, five, six, three. All right, save the device. So I've got the 608 on this, um, and the main the main thing I want access to is I want access to the system 7.1 partition because that's where all the utilities are. 
So if I can just get the thing to boot, as long as I can access the 7.1 partition, I've got everything there. So, now it's enough of you, you disrespectful SE. Do. Jesus, System 6 is fast, isn't it? I've turned this around to a point now that I can't see it, so I've got to move it a bit. So what we're waiting for at the moment, it's, uh, it's having a good old think. It's loading all these extra partitions that I have on the drive. Uh, and in particular, I want uh, System 7.1, number 1. Right here. Is anyone needing to speak to me? I haven't been following the chat. I've been too preoccupied. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no, there it is. Um, what are we looking for? Hard disk toolkit. I hope this works under six. It may not. I can always do a drag and drop. No, I can't. I've got to format the darn thing, don't I? Hard disk toolkit. Uh, the one I use is, I think, version version 1.8. That's my... Whoa! Spacebar. Oops. Okay. Let me, wait, let me fix it. So I've got a keyboard on a keyboard, so... Ah! Here we go. Frustrating, isn't it? If this says will not work in System 6, I'll be very upset. Appears to be doing. You can see the little hard drive flickering away here. Flicker, flicker. Such a little flicker. Yes. Yes. Oh, no multi finder. <laughs> Remember those days when you could only have one application running at a time? <laughs> oh, far out, eh? I'm actually going to be doing um, a little piece on System 6 in one of the up and coming Maciacs. I haven't had a chance to um, get it all set up yet, but um, I have an incredible fondness for System 6. So. You, you won't be able to see this, but basically what this says here, at ID 0, uh, it, uh, there's no volume there, it's not formatted, but it's showing me that it's 8192. So it recognizes the capacity of the, the configuration I've got here, which is 8 gigabytes. Uh, it's showing code source, SCSI to SD 4.2. Now, you can, from within SCSI to SD utility, you can actually edit what comes up in this information here. I can make it pretend to be a Seagate drive if I want. But there's just no need for that with this. With Hard Disk Toolkit, if I go to Format, uh, Cop. Who called the cops? Someone called the cops. That says Cops, C-O-P. <sighs> Maybe there are problems with the RAM in this. <laughs> I mean, it boots, but it doesn't do much else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, system six. Let's try this again. I just took it. Always try something twice, even if you think it's going to do exactly the same thing the second time. Always try it twice, you never know. <clears throat> I mustn't forget to put this back on. Format. Continue. 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 And format. And continue. And it's done. 
Um, I like to do standard partitioning. What do we have? I think it's just you do. Oh, there's a key stuck down or something. Maybe my problems with this keyboard. Or not. There is something ADB-ish going on here. It does sound like a key is stuck, but even when I unplugged the keyboard, it still kept doing it. So possibly some uh, ADB issues. Make sure data is backed up. Continue. Testing transfer loop. So this is one of the things that I don't like about hard disk toolkit. It's probably a good thing, but it's also kind of a bad thing. And that is that it, um, uh, it does this transfer loops thing um, where it goes through and it tries writing different... Um, sized blocks of data to try and find the optimum way to partition the drive um, and here we go so here you go testing transfer size of seven blocks eight blocks nine blocks ten blocks eleven blocks twelve blocks and it basically goes through and it does that it takes quite some time so i might end the stream here because uh it probably take about 10 minutes but basically once it's finished once How's everyone doing? Doing good? I'm really starting to think that, you know those people that said um, that you shouldn't use composite RAM sims on an SE? I'm beginning to think that they knew what they were talking about. Uh, See, so everyone was ready to just get going. And then I just decided, no, you know what? I'm gonna stick some different RAM in it and try again. Yeah. I'm planning a video coming up fairly soon where I'm going to just be going through all of my Mac collection. Just saying, uh, just showing people, you know, what I have, why I have them in my collection. Because I don't have every Mac in my collection. I've only got some. But I, um, I have ones that I like and I sort of want to go and explain what I like about them and why they're nice in a collection and all that sort of stuff. Um... So that's something to look forward to. If it's that something you're interested in, if it's not something you're interested in, then uh, don't watch it. So. Do I have a mem test for the Mac? I think I do. I, I've, oh God, these are 256s. Fat lot of good they are. I've got ones floating around. I can always raid them off that other board that's not mine. What have I got there? I've got more composite ones here. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take ones off one of these other boards. And just have to remember they're not mine. <laughs> Michael, just got your notification. Well, don't worry, mate. It's only three hours and 15 minutes since I started. Yeah, good old YouTube and its notifications. It's crazy. Uh, I am planning to start doing some notifications like on Instagram. But I just, uh, you know, I've mentioned this before in one of, my, one of my live streams. I need a, like a 15 year old to explain to me how Instagram works. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so different RAM. Will this be our savior? And the easiest way to tell would be to try and boot it from system 7.1 or 7.0. That'll be fairly conclusive because we haven't been able to do that thus far. Uh, yeah, I know Steve has offered to teach me how to use uh, Instagram. I should take him up on that. Yeah. 
because apparently it is a far better way to alert people that you're about to live stream. Uh, and I believe that. So let me just, I'm just going to try the old system 7.0. Um, so we're going to move that up to six. We'll move that down. There is a little trick that you can do where you can boot uh, from a different ID by holding shift option command delete and then the SCSI ID you want to boot from. It doesn't seem to work with these SCSI to SDs though, which is a bit frustrating. That can stay there. That needs to be there. All right, let's try that. Save to device. Oh, it doesn't recognize the device because the device doesn't plug in. It's fussy like that. You know what I find really funny is back in the olden days, I used to call, you know, when I was doing tech support and stuff like that, I would say, hold down command O and people would go, which one's the command key? Which, 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 which command? And I would say, um, oh, it's the Apple. And I eventually just got to the point where I just started calling it the Apple key. I would say, uh, just press the Apple key. And now I say that to people and they're like, which one's the Apple key? Uh, it's the one that says command on it. Crazy. Can't put in links where you can, but they are not clickable. Oh, that's that sucks. Right. Okay. So we're back on system 7.0 for this one. So uh, it'll be interesting to see whether it works this time, because as I say, that will give us a fairly conclusive answer as to whether changing the RAM sorted out the problem. Uh, uh, uh. If it just goes black again, I'll stop the stream and we can just move on. I mean, oh, you guys have been very patient with me. Yeah, straight into black screen. So, um, yeah, there are a couple of reasons why that could be happening. Um, the only real way I can know for sure would be as if I had another SE right here and could uh, just test it. But I don't have another SE right here to test it with. Uh, well, I do actually. I've got one just there. Huh. A working board just here. Should we just try it with that one? Shall we? I promise it's the last. Oh yeah, I've got to go soon. I promised to give someone a lift somewhere in uh, about uh, 10 minutes. So this is going to have to be ooh, far out. I just didn't realise how uh, how little time I had. Yeah, I've, I've got to ultrasonic this one. There's no doubt about, about it. Um, but I don't like doing that um, in live stream because it's just too noisy. Uh, so is this the one that works? No, this is the one that doesn't work. Now this is just getting downright confusing. Um, all of these things are going to be ultrasonic because, uh, they're old and dirty and sometimes magically makes things work again. But, uh, uh, when I run the ultrasonic cleaner in during a live stream, it's pretty horrendous. I mean, it's horrendous for me, even if you guys can't hear it that bad, it's so loud. I can barely hear myself think. So this is the last resort. We're tying a completely different logic board here. If this works with system seven, then we're all good. I'll just install the system. If this does not work with system seven, then we know there's something wrong with my system seven and then we can blame it no more. Well, this one is a bit of a dodgy board because it's not holding the RAM in very well. So, they're just, some of the RAM's just virtually being held in by gravity. Oh crap, there goes a the mouse. Whee! 
is me now working fast because I don't have much time left. Working fast, working fast. Thinking fast. Bing. Once again, we're trying System 7. Um, if this works, we'll continue. If it doesn't work, we'll say goodbye. And I will say thank you to everyone for their wonderful time and all that sort of stuff. <sighs> All right, well, at least we know it's not the board. It's there's something wrong with my system seven installation on this. So that to some extent is a little bit, uh, a little bit pleasing. Um, so, uh, so now I will probably end the stream or I'll just change back to system six. Uh, uh, that system six, that's it there. So that's going to be there. And then that one there is going to be there. File, save to device. Steve, we're streaming the next five hours after this. Are you going to, Steve? Are you, Steve? Are you going to? Don't let me down. I, of course, won't be able to watch it because the first thing I have to do as soon as I finish this stream is go out. Where are we sitting viewers-wise? 43. Well, congratulations to all of you that have persevered. I mean, I'm guessing that a lot of you have actually just started watching this stream and then walked away uh, with the uh, with the YouTube running and you're not actually watching it because, I mean, come on. So this is, uh, we're back to System 6 here, which gave me the most success, but we're still being a bit of a poo head. Oh, like that. I don't know what's going on here. I wonder... I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to... Oh, I don't know. No. No. Uh, no. I, mm. I'm running out of things that it could be. It's a completely different board. So is it something relating to the SCSI to SD that I've got plugged in? That are having some issues there? Um... Perplexed. Perplexed. Okay, uh, if later when you have time, if you could send me a snapshot of the About This Macintosh on your Color Classic by holding the Command Shift 3 command. Uh, yes, sure. Uh, on my Color Classic. Yeah, well, yeah. My Color Classic Classic's kind of in pieces at the moment, so uh, maybe not. Uh, analog board, uh, unlikely with this. I mean, you know, if, if it was going to be an issue with the power supply, maybe. But these powers, I mean, maybe the power supply needs some recapping. I haven't recapped it. Or have I? I can't remember. Um, floppy drive board. Uh, I, floppy drive wasn't plugged in that last time. Board board. Yeah. Um... There's the board that you've installed. Yes, I mean, the SCSI 2SD, I mean, I can disconnect that, I suppose. Uh, it may not boot now, but we can try. I can't format anything with it disconnected. Oh, you know what it might be? Maybe I need to change the settings on the SCSI 2SD inside for the SE. Can you scope to a monitor the voltage stability? Yes, I can. I can indeed. Except that the scope's not down here. It's up in the house. Yeah, no, it's not going to start because it's not terminated. Um, all right. Well, I do have to stop the stream because I have run out of time. I do have other responsibilities. Um, well, I should say I have responsibilities. I'm going to say other responsibilities. This isn't really a responsibility. This is just me having fun. So... Um, 
Um, so my apologies that I wasn't able to get that happening. We nearly got it there, didn't we? We nearly got it formatting. Um, and then we just got the bomb part way through it. So um, one of the things that I sometimes do is I might, when I'm having troubles like that, I might take the SCSI 2SD out, format it on another computer, and then bring it back formatted with the system on it. Um, you know, sometimes that just works out easier. Um, so, uh, but look, one thing we do have to remember with this is it worked beautifully with that uh, 20 megabyte mini scribe in here. So the problem may well be related to some of the configurations I've set up on that uh, uh, on that SCSI uh, 2SD. I've never put one in an SE before. So there might be some specific settings that I need to alter in order to get it to work on here. So I'm going to do a little bit of research on that, see if I can find out. But I want to thank everyone for taking the time here to, uh, to join in in this live stream. I've been going now for three and a half hours, so yay. Uh, to everyone who gave super chats, I think someone gave a super chat while I was up in the house and I might have missed it or something. So if anyone gave a super chat and I missed it, I thank you very, very much for that. Um, and um, and let's um, just do this so that you can see my pretty face. Did it work? Did it work? Yes, it did. So um, uh, thanks everyone for joining. I will be live streaming again in the not too distant future and it will be more of the same. Uh, I've got some pre-recorded videos coming out fairly soon, which are going to be fairly interesting as well, hopefully. And I, uh, I hope to see you at the next one. Uh, thanks for keeping me company. So press the end stream button. Awkward pause while we wait for the other thing to come up and confirm. Thank you. Yes. See you later, everyone. Thank you for joining.